Hello there, collectors, hobbyists, sports enthusiasts, and fans of live streaming videos. Tonight is our July Card Auction live closing show. My name is Mike Provenzale. I'm the production manager at Heritage Sports, and joining me shortly will be a very special guest I'm sure most of you are familiar with. But tonight's the big night. This auction is session one closing tonight, which features all the vintage cards from our summer card auction. Tomorrow night will be the modern side of the cards. And then Saturday night will be the final session. So three sessions and extended bidding begins tonight at 10 p.m. Central Time. My guest and I are gonna be talking about some of our favorite items, cards, sets, wax, you name it, that are in the auction. Some things that are hot, some things that are up and coming, just things we enjoy or we think you will enjoy. And we're going to run through the whole thing through to extended bidding at 10 p.m. Central Time and beyond as we see where all these incredible items find new homes in new collections. Now, if you don't understand extended bidding, you just have to have your bid in before that 10 p.m. time. And then a 30 minute countdown clock will begin for each lot. Each lot will stay open for 30 minutes. If it doesn't get a bid, every time it gets a bid, the 30 minute clock resets. So a lot of exciting items tonight, everything from the 1800s to today, cards, sets, wax, a little bit of everything, and a few surprises thrown in as well. We're gonna learn about heritage auctions in general. We have over 40 departments here. We're in our shiny new headquarters in Dallas. And uh, it's everybody together under one roof, which has really become a spectacular thing. You get to see everyone and the incredible items offered by all of our departments. But tonight, it's all about trading cards. And uh, why not start with the biggest card in the auction? One of our favorites, the 1933 Babe Ruth, 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth. This is number one. 49 in a PSA near mint to mint eight. There's only two superior to this example, a favorite among all collectors, it's one that all collectors try to have in their collection. And this is one of the finest you could find. Uh, estimate on this one is 750,000 currently at 400,000. And we're expecting some movement before extended bidding begins tonight at 10 p.m. This is one of the most iconic cards in the hobby. Classic pose from the Bambino there and a beautiful example of it. Brilliant red. Uh, PSA is over a thousand submissions of this card and only two have ever rated higher. So just a beauty and for the uh, high level collector, this is the kind of card that will elevate any collection. And it's going to find a new home tonight in just a few hours. And we'll move right along to another classic, another favorite of the hobby. This is the 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle, number 253. This is a PSA near mint to mint eight as well. Iconic card and just a beautiful example. And here he is right on time as always. Oh, my Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you recognize the voice. Now you get to see the visage. Mr. Tony Geezy. Welcome, Tony. I would have dressed up, but I'm saving all my good clothes for the national. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the national. Okay. A I won't, lot I won't going ruin any on. surprises then. But we'd be remiss if we didn't right at the top, Tony, talk yes, about sir. the NBA finals. I mean, this is a, it all comes down to the hobby, everything. We're going to have to extend the show for about maybe another 30 <laughs> or 40 minutes. Greatest sporting experience of my life. So Tuesday night, game six, Tony, where were you? I Not was the at people. the Pfizer Forum, as was Chris Narrett, and we had a great time. And I can't believe I saw my team win an, an actual title. And you've been a Bucks fan for almost four or five weeks now, right? And uh, so that going was, on six weeks. Oh, there you so go. you so must have been very you're, rewarding. You're, you're fairly close on that. So how was the experience? What was it like? Surreal. Uh, that, that sort of that, that keeps coming to mind because you see such bad basketball for years, for decades. <laughs> and then something happens. They get a superstar. You know, guys don't really come to Milwaukee as free agents. 
So uh, it, was, it was amazing to see, and it was fun to, to see the energy and the atmosphere and just the buzz in the city. And uh, it's something I'll never forget. I've never been to a Super Bowl. This kind of was my Super Bowl. There you and, go. Uh, had a great time and glad to be back in the office and can't oh, I'm wait sure to be in exactly Chicago. exactly where you wanted to be, right, oh, after that? I didn't make the... I didn't make the uh, parade today. But. <laughs> and we've got some people commenting already. If you'd like to comment, already? please feel free. We'd love to hear from you. Questions, comments. If you want to know about Tony's NBA Finals experience, we've got uh, one bucks and six already. <laughs> there you go, Tony. Wow. Um, but yeah, Pretty if you have any questions, guy. please, we'd love to hear from you all night. It's been a big week, Tony. Yesterday, we had a couple legends in the office. Tell me who was here. Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson. They were in, at the Heritage office? In the office. Captain America and soon-to-be minted Hall of Famer Drew Pearson. Were you Long nervous? Overdue. Do you get nervous oh, when never. you... never. Me and Roger go way back. No big deal. No, I was very nervous. I would be... Personal hero, uh, and they totally delivered. Uh, they are... We're here to promote a Hail Mary NFT. We're going to be selling in our Platinum auction coming up next week. We'll be talking about some of that stuff too. Got some of the highlights right here behind us as well. Uh, a couple you brought in, I believe. I mistaken. just remember that Eddie Plank had, and that's one of the coolest vintage items that I've ever seen. And it is so hard to get that turn of the century, those early baseball stars. And that is a true, true piece of baseball memorabilia. And no way that's fitting on your head, Tony. I'm just going to say. I tried. No, I didn't try. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I haven't tried it on. No, I don't think it will. But, uh, you know, Eddie Plank, you know, he's got the tobacco card everybody wants. Very, very few pieces of memorabilia. I, that may be the only game-worn item in the hobby. And his autograph is really difficult to find. So there's not much of it out there. And for a true baseball collector – that's about as good as it can get from an early baseball star. There you go. Cool Hall item. Too. <laughs> Saw your name all over the box. Knew you brought it in. <laughs> uh, so a lot going on here at Heritage. But, Tony, let's talk some cards. we got the card auction closing this evening. It just continues to amaze me, you know, what this market is. And, you know, the vintage stuff just continues to go up and up and up, it seems like. And uh, we are so lucky and thankful to have all these great consigners and great bidders as well consigning these high-end cards and you know you just see some of these cardboard treasures and it never gets old i mean they're literally a thing of beauty it's like it, christmas morning working at heritage you never know you know gonna i was gonna use that line and say next week at the national it's like christmas day yes you know there you it's go. like every single day is christmas yeah, day because you get to bad. see new uh, did see new stuff and you get to see people you haven't seen in two years yeah that Very to excited. me is so we'll go ahead and say it booth 824 come by we're gonna be doing free appraisals taking in consignments Tony will be giving out bear hugs, of course. He extra, can do that extra, thing. extra bear hugs yeah. this year. He's been doing that to make up. He's been doing push-ups to get ready for the extra know, strain. Kinda, but uh, we're gonna have over six hundred items from our platinum auction on display in the booth. We're taking the show on the road, basically, guys. That's right, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun and games there too. We're gonna be doing a break on the main stage on Saturday with vintage breaks. Uh, we're gonna be breaking a '69 Topps basketball pack. The tall boys. That's right. Ooh. So that's going to be exciting. Do I get to open it up? No, I'm kidding. No. Who's going to do that? No. Who, who does the honors? Oh, Mr. Layton Shelton, of course. Wow. Under Heritage, one of the best wow. guys in the hobby. Uh, Derek Grady will be on hand as well to throw out some lame jokes from the uh, main stage. <laughs> He's also going to be uh, co-hosting the great uh, American Collectibles show. Okay. So a uh, lot going on. We'd love to see you come by the booth anytime. Tony, you'll be able to hear him as soon as you walk in the venue, so it'll be easy. I'll be extra loud this year. Yeah, extra loud. That's extra what loud. we all need. See, I got to make sure that I get a good night's sleep because at the end of the National, I always lose my voice because <laughs> I'm talking and talking and talking. Which isn't talking. necessarily always a bad thing for some of your coworkers. <laughs> Not me. Not me. I love the guffaws. I love the guffaws. <laughs> yeah. 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 But back to cards. Right back in. Tony's here, right on time as always. He's set up and ready to go. I'm fashionably lit. Oh, I can't say I'm fashionably. You got me. I got you there. You always have me, though. Yeah, but I got the sneakers on. Uh, the new format here. I uh, was afraid it might show off the shoes, but uh, we're good. We're good. What are you thinking? Terrible. Yeah, we changed things up I like a little it. bit. I like it. I like it. I like the like flowers. The, the Today the... Show a little bit. Or, Am uh, I Hoda? Or Frost Nixon, maybe, <laughs> also. Um, but yes, very exciting. And... I'm going to go right back to this. 51 Bowman, Mickey Mantle, and a PSA 8, Tony. Have you seen this one in person? 
I have not, but I love the color. It's such a, it, I know I've said this before. It's such a timeless image of him. Uh, a young. That's Robert. Our sec All our, right. Our yeah, he's guy. always Making here. sure everyone's okay. Yeah. That's good to see. No, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful card. Great registration corner centering. It's got all the bells and whistles on it. And um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous card of a young mantle. I mean, it's his true rookie card. There you go. Call, it, call it like it is. Mm -hmm. And if you're an SGC person, no problem. We've also got a 51 Bowman mantle in an SGC eight. So we got you covered on we both got sides. It all for if you, you prefer it in the tuxedo, there it is right there. <laughs> Beautiful card as well. I love the background on it. That's my favorite part. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love that. Just uh, emblematic of that early mantle, early 50s. What was to come for him in America? Fantastic card. And this is one of the two of the finest in the hobby, right? And, he, and he's one of those that just, you know, we say it all the time with Ruth and Gehrig and Ty Cobb. They transcend generations. He's, for baby boomers, he's the one. Yes. He's the one everybody wants. And he signed a lot of autographs, but everybody still wants a piece of Mickey Mantle. And that's one of the best you could ever own. Absolutely. Upgrade any collection right mm -hmm. there. Tony, what do you want to talk about? I feel like I've been hogging the microphone. No, here. We got a 1952 Tops mantle. Not to course, take it, not to course. take the spotlight here. No, please. But another one, and we, you know, it was, it was funny I, when I was back home. My my mom had us had some Sports Illustrated for me to look at, and what did they have an article on the 52 Tops mantle? So tell me, she's getting all your Sports Illustrated and just saving them up, and then when you go she back, gets it, I don't anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. And of course, my uncle asked for the swimsuit issue. <laughs> so I don't know. I I didn't even see that. I don't know when it comes out anymore. But they had a very extensive article. Heritage was mentioned in it um, about the 52 the 52 Tops mantle and Cyberger and the the theory that they were thrown it into the into the ocean mm -hmm. and just um just I mean, a, that, that's what you did in the 50s when you didn't need something you, you just, want to get rid of just it threw it in the ocean it in the atlantic but it's it's amazing the the people investing in it you know and not just sports people it's everyone it's you know it's th that market it just it, it just isn't a sports thing it's it it's almost like artwork now yes. and it, it's turned into that and this one here six and a half again um, centering is pretty strong on this one. Um, crystal clear. I mean, you know, there, there, there's no, you know, the edges are really nice and it's just, it's, it's a card that it just, you know, it, it's not just for sports anymore. And this one right here, 110,000, we've seen the 52 tops mantles just go up exponentially. It seems like, uh, we had especially a, in the last year, you've seen it earlier this year, we had a PSA three, mm -hmm. the nicest three you'd ever see, but that sold for over a hundred thousand. Yeah. So. We had a PSA one that did like 37,000. Wow. And I was just shocked that it would get that number. And the first thing I looked at, cause I'm like, why and the centering was just gorgeous on it. And I, you know, to find us, find this card centered is a big challenge as, as it is on a lot of the fifties and sixties cards. But I mean, Mantle, he really moves the radar. He always has and he always will. So Moves the radar. Moves the Have radar. I've been saying that phrase incorrectly my whole life. So Why? Move, move the needle? Both. Okay. Both. Okay. We're, just want to be clear. Just we're, be clear. We're, we're adding things if here. You're, right? If you're creating your own catchphrase, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have it. I'm going right. to let you have it. Patent that one. All right. What's up next, Tony? 1954, Hank Aaron. And out of all the 50s cards, that's my favorite card there is. Not because it's Milwaukee. It's it's that orange background. The young Hank Aaron. He's fielding a ball, and in this one again, it's centering is always a problem on this one. This one's graded an eight. It's at thirty seven thousand right now, and this card is is an, another one. I know we say it all the time. They've really gone up since he passed away. This card in any grade, not just the grade eight, in any grade has has really risen in value, and. I mean, this is one of the nicest that you could own. The home run, well, the real home run king, I think it's pretty much established. Right. Call it like you see it, Tony. 3,700 People want hits. the truth from well, me. Right there. They're getting it here. And I know oh. part of the reason you love this card is because it's Milwaukee. I mean, but I love that. For some reason, the background colors on the 54s, you've got that orange. You've got the yellow with uh, Ted Williams. It's just, it's such a beautiful set. I think it, it's my favorite set of the 50s. It's my favorite set of, of all time. As far as okay. times go, so good to know. There's a little uh, bit of trivia for the people out there. All right, I'm gonna talk about a little bit older one. Gonna go back, Tony. This is the T206 Walter Johnson portrait. 
Love this one. Um, we've learned a lot about the T206 set since we've been handling the David Hall T206 collection. We just had part seven of that. We're going to have part eight coming up later. But uh, this is an amazing example, just an elegant and timeless uh, portrait. Um, it has a sweet cap back. And this one's a PSA 7. Tony, when I see these T206 cards in these high grades, it's a thing of beauty, really. Uh, and this one has the 649 overprint, and it's the highest graded of only 43 in the PSA registry that have that overprint out of 1,100 plus submissions to PSA. Uh, great Carl Horner portrait, too. That always takes it up a notch it does, for it me. Does. Uh, one of the premier lensmen I mean, in sports he's, history. He's, I mean, Walter Johnson, you know, people always say, be happy he was a nice man. Because if he wasn't, <laughs> I mean, there's the people whole story. People say that about you, too, Tony. Well, I mean, <laughs> there's, but there's a whole story about Cobb, how he would, you know, kind of get on top of the plate because he knew Walter Johnson wouldn't, 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 hit him. wouldn't be throwing at him. And, uh, his grandson did a wonderful book on him, on Walter Johnson, and, uh, you know, a true gentleman and one of the greatest of all time. He had a very unique delivery, mm -hmm. kind of a sidearm delivery, which may, might have helped to preserve his arm. But back then, there was, I, early on in his career, I think he pitched both ends of a, of a doubleheader one, one time. And, wow. You know, maybe a day or two of rest. It was a little different time back then. <laughs> so this one has high-end corners, rich colors, that bright white border you can just see it gleaming there uh, so a lot to like about that one and then moving on next we've got the 1921 e121 american caramel this is the babe ruth beautiful example here uh, a quote i love from the 1921 yankees uh, i wish him all the luck in the world said frank banker frank home run baker his teammate um he has everybody else, including myself, hopelessly outclassed. And <laughs> it's like that was in what year? 1921. Uh, wow. You know, it's likely he felt a little uh, sheepish about his moniker sharing the dugout with uh, Babe Ruth. He never put more than a dozen home runs into the stands, and Ruth accomplished that in 25 games, I believe, in 1921. Uh, so here's. Ruth, one of his greatest seasons, 1921, and a classic card here. Um, if you look closely at the jersey that Ruth is wearing uh, on the back, you'll see that it's the Red Sox model. Oh, my God, you're right. You're With the right. subject's printed identification as Babe Ruth, right field, New York Americans. So uh, a classic image of Ruth and a beautiful example here. Total population for uh, this card is just 26, so very hard to come by. Likely, whoever wins this tonight is going to be owning their first example of it. There just mm -hmm. aren't that many out there, and uh, this one's a PSA X5. So that's a, a real nice example, example. Of that card. Oh yeah, and anything Ruth, come on. Yeah, I mean everybody. That's he's the. He's the one. Right. He's always been the one. And you didn't see with his baseball card stuff probably the last 15 years. Now you've seen people looking for his early stuff. Before it wasn't really established where now it is. And people want anything early, Ruth, especially cards. So there you go. The market's strong. For and speaking of Yankee legends, up next, 1939 play ball, Joe DiMaggio. And this one's a PSA Mint 9, Tony. That's that's none strong. higher than that. It's one of 13 graded mint, none higher, and crisp edges and clean surfaces on this one. Uh, in 39, DiMaggio had just three full seasons in the bigs, already averaging over 200 hits and batting already? 331 <laughs> there. Look at him, youthful, just ready to take on the world. and Which he did. He did. There you go. So answering the bell. Uh, estimate on this one is 25,000. So, uh, someone's going to be happy with this example. It's at 25,000 is the estimate. What's, what's the bid at? Uh, 41,000 right now. That's the way things are going, Tony. Wow. But I mean, when you're talking about so, you know, we've had a huge year and a half in the hobby, but when you're talking about none higher or pop one, those are the cards that are really seeing some incredible results. Like you talked about earlier, a lot of new people have come into the hobby, people getting out of traditional investing, uh, be it Wall Street or real estate, things like that, and realizing how much 
potential there is in the collectibles market. And especially with cards, it's a little easier to get your head around the cards if you're just mm -hmm. jumping in. Uh, it's a little more commoditized they're, with the grading. They're graded. It's it's more cut and dry. This is an eight. This is a nine. And it, you know, it's really helped it. But yeah, uh, the market is so strong. And I mean, these this is a part of a Americana. Yes. It really truly is. And yeah, when you're adding new bidders, new blood, it's it's really not, you know, it's taken it from the hobbyist, took it to a certain level. Now you're getting these investors that have taken it to a whole different level. And my goodness, it's uh, it's amazing. It continues to amaze me, the quality that is out there. All right, Tony. I'll tell you what, let's check in on the big board. We haven't done that let's yet. Let's do it. Uh, okay. The 54 Aaron, 40,000 right now. 77 tops basketball. We all know Wax has uh, been a driving force in our hobby. Is at, well, where did it go? I think it was 3,700 on that one. 50,000 on a, on a Munson rookie. Mint nine, pop four with none higher. Yeah, there we go again. None I mean, higher. You can expect, you can watch uh, the action come in on the, you can watch this show and the recent bid activity screen on ha.com on our webpage. See the bids as they come in live. Take what they should what do they is are. get two screens, one for the bid board and one to watch us. Well, you know how to make that happen, Tony. <laughs> I, I power it right there. There we go. All right. What are you going to talk about over there? 1909, Ty Cobb. Bad off nice. shoulder, old mill. This is a population of two with only one hire for the brand. Right now, now you're eight, getting into it when you're well, talking about the brand. Again, we, we talk that's about the, the good stuff. That's, that's the gritty details. I mean, you talk vibrant colors. It's Cobb. Got to have a bat in hand, which he does here. 87,500. One of the nicest T206 old mills that's out there. And, you know, the thing about this is you may see it come up every few years. But you may not see this one again for you know who knows how long. So if you don't get your opportunity, if you don't buy it tonight, who knows? You may not get another chance to to get this for years. And then when you see it come up again, what's it going to be worth then? You know how much more? I mean, things like of this quality don't really go down in value all that much. Right. Great investment. Kinda, what Tony's saying is bid early, bid off. So yes. Uh, get in there on that. And the have old, a strategy. Old, old mill back, one of those rare backs, and uh, one of the more aesthetically pleasing ones, in my opinion, for sure. Absolutely. We're on a roll, Tony. We got an investment one here. No. Uh, Nineteen eighty-nine. Investment sounder. Uh, uh, yeah, should we should I, have should like. I be a, writing all this. Should sound? I do a Heisman? Oh wait, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry. You still are doing it right, Tony. I, I know. Someday I know. You're gonna figure that out. I want someday. somebody to come to the national and teach me to do a, the proper Heisman. <laughs> No, uh, this is a card of our youth. Yes. Now, I'm, you're what, late for, late 30s? I thought you were going to say late 40s. No, I did by accident. 41. So, 41. 41. I'm, I'm 45. But I've so. got the hair of a 60-year-old. So That's good hair, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How many guys would go nuts to have that kind of hair? Collector, um, dealer lot, I'm oh, yeah. sorry. 89 upper deck, Ken Giffey Jr. It's a card we all gravitated towards. It's a card we all wanted. I told the story before how I had a chance to buy Jerome Walton or Ken Griffey Jr. And I bought Jerome Walton in the extended series <laughs> of the 89 Upper Deck. And I still so have the card. That falls into the, uh, those who can't do coach yes. category. Yes, exactly. Why you're in the seat you're in right now. I did get one. But then when I got it graded by PSA, it came back a five. And I'm like, what? <laughs> there is a crease on it. And there, a lot of them have that same crease on them. So... It's a fairly tough card to get in high grade. Yes, there are a lot of them out there, but the Gem Mint 10s, you're getting a lot of people buying these now. And just like the whole sports card market, it's really gone up in the last year, year and a half. This is a very good investment lot. 14,500, 10 Gem Mint 10 Griffies. Hard to get that grade. I know there's the white borders, but centering and the hologram chipping on the back is, is always an issue on these things as well. So there are some pitfalls. Griffey, not in the steroid controversy, one of the most beloved players of his generation. Yeah. This um, is a card we knew was going to be valuable. We, we were, all and did. And we were right. Yep. I mean, not the one you got. I got a five, game, but, but uh, everybody else, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this consigner is, is going to, you know, he's going to do well on this one. But great card. It's a card we all grew up wanting, and uh, you can get a couple of them here. Well, you can get ten of them here. Yeah, or more. There, I think there's a single, a few singles out there, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, up next, another great group lot, too. Cal Ripken fans. Uh, another 
modern guy who's incredibly solid investment, uh, the Iron Man. So this is a 1981 to 2002 Cal Ripken Jr. player set collection, 1,500 plus Ripken cards. Wow. In here, Tony. Really? It's number two on the PSA player registry. So Ripken, of course, the rookie of the year in 82, but he actually made his big, big league debut two weeks before his 21st birthday in August of 1981. Uh, he had spent most of the season in Rochester for the Red Wings farm club there. His stat line for that abbreviated season, five hits, no RBIs in 23 games, batted 128. Kind of a rough start, but yeah. he rebounded well. The and- last time he would disappoint, you might say, right there. Uh, so this collection goes from Rochester to Baltimore and all 2,632 straight games, plus over 1,500 cards in here, uh, all PSA graded, large number of minor league cards, rookie cards, serial number cards, game used relic cards, rare region only cards spanning his entire career. And the overall average for the PSA grades is comes to 9.4 for it's basically a ready hundred cards. It's a ready made collection. You don't have to put the work in. All you got to do is bid win. And you've got a, one of the nicest Ripken junior collections out there. It's unbelievable. I was looking through it today. It just doesn't stop. A lot of nines, a lot of tens, obviously with 9.4 average over 1500 cards, all of them are right at the top. Really hard ones to find a few. I'd never even seen before. Just imagine you got to put those on the, display just having them all in their own little spot you know we talk about how collecting is about bragging Mm -hmm. and bam right there it's number two on the registry you're going to jump right to the top and uh then you can then then number one's gonna have to fight pretty hard to be a fight it's gonna be a fight oh (laughs) my goodness the registry all right fair enough fair enough i like that go from Uh, zero to number two right (laughs) real quick don't you (laughs) i like it i like it so very cool Ripken lot. A lot of things you could do with that. Hold on to it. You could try and improve it, get to number one. I think you could get there, uh, break it up, give it out as gifts if you're in Baltimore. I mean, who knows? Possibilities are endless. Um, and you if- know, he's one of those guys that you never really hear much bad about. Yeah. You know, he's like mutual not. and Ernie Banks. You just never hear anything like, oh, he was. You're in that same category, Tony. No, 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 no one. Would I'm not the of- Iron Man, though. <laughs> no, he, uh, definitely not. No. <laughs> I think you miss a day or two here. Few, or there or worse. Oh, we got a question for Tony here. Uh, let me see. Tony G and the professor killing the show tonight. Oh, that's Roy Strickland, our buddy. I'm the professor because I've got gray hair, I guess. Oh, or maybe it's good, the jacket, man. something like that. Uh, Tony, what's your free throw percentage nowadays? Okay. Better or worse than Giannis? Worse than him. Here's the on thing. Tuesday I won night. the 1986 sure. Knights of Columbus uh, free throw. I have a, I got a little trophy for it. Then I went to the next level. <laughs> did horrible. <laughs> did horrible. I could Why? shoot. What changed? I, I practiced too much. It's now. all mental. Yeah, you practice. I practice too, too much. much. Here's the problem. thing. I can shoot. I can't jump. Can't pass. My basketball IQ isn't good. All I can do is shoot. That's it. Some three pointers. He's got a high arcing shot too. Tough but I can't. Block. I mean, free throws. I I I have to practice a little bit. But that's that's all I'm good for. Other than that, so yeah. To answer the question, I'm saying below Giannis then, most likely. Giannis game six. Yes, it's just in lifetime. Oh, lifetime. No, no, I'd be better. I'd be. Like oh, better. Seventy. Sounds like he's I calling think, out the finals 70. MVP. Wow. Two time hey, MVP. Can, if he, if he, Seventeen for nineteen game six. I'll never complain. I mean, that's again. Steve Nash territory it right is, there. It is. Um, let's see. Who else we've got? Uh, Game Time Gallery. The SGC 51 Bowman Mantle is a beauty. Agree 100%. Uh, big fan of that tuxedo on those classic cards. You know? Oh, they, they never gets old. Never Absolutely. gets old. All right. So after that Ripken group lot, of course, I had to talk about this one. This is another amazing one. This is a 1994 to 2020 Ichiro player near master set over 1600 cards in this wow. one tony number one on the psa player registry i was looking through this one it is incredible and i had forgotten ichiro 27 year old rookie in 01 rookie of the year mvp batting championship gold glove silver slugger and an all-star if he would have if he would have started playing in the major leagues let's say like 22 23 he would have just blown by oh yeah pete rose's Rose. record i mean it, i 
If you, Nobody if you thought combine he would. his hits from the uh, Nippon League, he mm. smashes it. Yeah. And uh, nobody thought when he came there at 27, he would ever get 3,000 hits. I mean, a, a guy coming in at 23 getting 3,000 is, is amazing enough. Right. But a guy coming in at 27, that's just amazing. And, and he, he was consistent. Arguably the best rookie year in history with all those accolades. Yeah, he had a lot of experience, you know. Most people who make their debut at 27, they are not the height of their skills. You know, mm -hmm. they had to struggle to get there. Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful collection. Number one on the registry, over 1,600 cards, ranging from his time in Japan through his entire career. Some cool, very cool Japanese releases in there. Over 100 cards uh, from Japan. Uh, there's BBM cards, Calibi, Cardwan. And uh, those are hard to find. And the rare insult inserts from his time in the Japanese league, 141 different rookie cards. God. Each of our rookie cards in here. Large number of serial numbered cards. You got the game used relic cards, uh, rare region only cards spanning his entire career uh, from Japan to the Mariners to the Yankees and the Mar Marlins. Overall PSA average, 9.5. Five on over 1600 another cards. ready made collection it's a beautiful thing uh somebody's gonna be very happy whoever goes home with this one tonight uh really interesting player and you know when we talk about collecting being history this is the complete history of one of the best players start to finish in two start different countries finish. yeah right yeah there. remarkable uh really incredible so good luck winning that tonight i think there's some going to be some good competition for that um and Tony, why don't you, you skipped over the, uh, oh, did you, did we miss one? No, we're good. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. It's the first time this year, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, we're going to take a little break, Tony. Okay. Give you a chance to get settled there since you rushed right in. Um, I, I need some, uh, beef jerky okay, though. Where's the beef jerky? Uh, Tony's favorite snack, Mountain Dew and beef jerky right there. Um, so Tony, do you know we have a video game department? I do, and I am amazed that the young lady who runs that department just does a phenomenal job, record prices every single week. And I'll give you a little insight. Oh, here okay. We go. Some video game insights. I was here from on, Tony. on a Pay Sunday at like two o'clock, and the guy who runs our comic division, Barry Sandoval, was like a kid at Christmas morning with a smile from ear to ear. It was about two o'clock, and I'm like, he's Kind of dressed up like you. He always it, dresses up. But shouldn't up someone like... who works in comics be happy all the time? Uh, yes. I, he was beaming. And I <laughs> said, Barry, what's going on? With the uh, Nintendo 64, Super Mario Brothers 1.4, 1.5 million, he was Give it ecstatic. 1.5 million. 1. 1. million. So they did it with The Legend of Zelda for eight eight sixty and change, I think it was. And then they really topped it with the um, Super Mario Brothers uh that's amazing. And the stories behind these, because I was talking to some of the comic guys, the stories behind how these get left unopened is just amazing. Who are these kids, these monsters that aren't opening video games? <laughs> I don't get One, it. the mom was mad at the kid. He got it for Christmas. One, she bought it from and forgot about it, and they found it in a drawer. It's just <laughs> there's all these great stories on these video games. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a new part of collecting that it wasn't around 10 years ago wasn't around probably even five years ago and it's just kind of had a meteoric rise to the to the top and that's what uh, a lot of the new generation is collecting so well let's find out a little bit more about it and we'll be back to talk some more cards in a few moments all right we have the super mario 64 9.8 a plus plus emily what do you have it's a three hundred and thirty thousand dollars heritage live on last it's and for 40,000 on Heritage Live. Now I'm asking 460,000. Bid now at 500,000. 500 is bid. Go 550,000. It's 700,000 on Heritage Live. Do I have an advance to 725,000? I do. Let's go 750,000. 975, Heritage Live. 975. 975, you know where this is going. Let's go a billion. It's 975 bit a million, Heritage Live. One I need million. one million. There's my million. Last call at 1.35. And we're going to sell at 1.3 million. 7107. 7107. Congratulations.
good stuff right there. I'm kicking myself right. for opening my video games. I got a lot of enjoyment out of it. Oh, I could be making so much fun. Of dollars. I had that so one. much. I, had that I didn't. Well, you had ColecoVision, NES, and then I think I got a Sega Genesis later on, but I was kind of over it. My last one. I still was, have my uh, NES, so. In 64th. Uh, so a few more comments. Uh, uh, yeah, Ray Strickland, love you guys. We love you too. Thank you everyone for watching. Much appreciated. He also says Tony G and Ric Flair at the National will Chicago survive. Oh, you know be there? I saw. What was it? No, I was walking by Gibson's and the, one of the the guys parking the car said it was like Hogan, Flair, and Rodman had just gone in there, <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, are you talking about? Throw Tony into that foursome. Right oh, there, man. No, Ric Flair, <laughs> one of the greats. And he had, I mean, the matches that he has had are phenomenal. And I mean, he had staying power too, though. I mean, those hour long matches and everything, just whew, big fan. Yeah, of big course. Fan. He's going to be there at the national signing. Tony will sign some autographs too. <laughs> um, <laughs> we also got uh, DJ Barnard. Uh, I'm submitting the 2001 Bowman Chrome Refractor Ichiro Rookie at the National, hoping for a 10. We're hoping for a 10 for you, too. Awesome Bring it on over, DJ. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look afterwards. Uh, would love to see it. Come on by. Um, so, Tony, let's talk some football. Football season's crank starting to crank up. I'm it's getting nervous about football. Cowboys training camp next week, buddy. All right. Yeah. You guys have you back got, in Oxnard. You guys, are, you guys have – everyone's saying you guys have a great chance they to go the state far. of the team. I'll tell you what. Jerry Jones is excited about the Cowboys' chances this year. Is he? Thought? Great sign, huh? You got a good coach. Got a good coach. Mike. But we also have some great football cards in the auction closing tonight. This uh, I just happened to see this on somebody else else's desk. Had to bring it up. 1948 Leaf Bob Waterfield. This is the black name on front variant. The rookie card. Just love this issue. It's fantastic. The blazing colors. And this is a gorgeous example right here of the uh, former Cleveland and L.A. Rams uh, Hall of Famer, number seven, tired by the He Rams. was a rock star. Yeah. They had some rock stars when they went from Cleveland to L.A. Movie stars, really excited about football, too. And I think and did he, he married at UCLA. So oh, did he? he? I didn't he came even, back to California mm -hmm. when the Rams moved. I'm sure he was super excited about that. Uh, but a gorgeous card. One of 13 at near mint to mint with just three hires. So a great example of it. But the colors beautiful. are just phenomenal. I love beautiful the colors issue. on those cards. And all dynamic poses for the yes. most part. Like that one right there. I love the angle from below. You know, mm -hmm. they, they get thought outside the box with this. You they know, did. it's not just your standard straight on portrait. Uh, but yeah, about to <laughs> uncork one deep right there. <laughs> and of course, Tony had to bring this one out. One of my favorite cards in the hobby. Roger Staubach. Yeah, that one too. You always we'll get to that one. Oh, later. I'm sorry, I didn't. This mean one, a little more, little more vintage, even the 1951 Bowman Tom Landry rookie, right here, um, number 20, and this is a PSA mint nine. Another great action shot here. Uh, he had a, you know, of course, led the Cowboys for almost three decades. That's what he was most known for, and was on the coaching staff with. Uh, Vince, Vince Lombardi, Lombardi on the Giants, on the Giants. Uh, after he was a player here in that Giants red uniform. 32 interceptions in 80 career games for Landry there. So That's, good player. It's impressive, good player. yeah. No, it's funny. I, I, I talked to his son recently, and he said, you it's know. Tony dropping names. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to. Me, me, I, I will say this. For you. His son looks exactly like him, and he said, that's what Roger said to me, too. <laughs> and I just was like, man, you look so much like your father. But he, oh, he said, like, when he went to coach the Cowboys, that he figured their expansion team, they're not going to, he's not going to last more than two or three years. And he did what, 29, 30 years, 29 years. which is amazing uh, at what he did and what he is to this state. And 60% uh, winning percentage lifetime, starting with an expansion. Team. That's amazing. Yeah. Cause it, you don't win those first few years, but he turned it around. And I mean, a model of consistency. I mean, he's which got is, uh, Highway 30 here is Tom Landry. He does. Highway. He does. I the, love the, the emblem. Icon I on, love on, that on emblem. The highway. It's beautiful. Ooh. So beautiful card here. Sharp illustration. Uh, it's a dynamic image, and it looks great on this one. Very clean, bright colors. One of 13 graded mint with just two higher. Uh, so that one should do over five grand tonight. Great one. I uh, love the Landry. We'll get to Starbuck. Don't you, don't you worry a bit about that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and you're up, Tony. 
Starting off, we have 1957. We've got two of the of the best cards in the set. Bart Starr leading off, and then Johnny Unitas, both rookie cards. Um, you know, he's got the throwing pose. We're at number 42, which we're not really – that was an early on number for him. But uh, really uh, sharp, great centering, great corners, um, just a solid near mint to mint eight on this one. Uh, again, I mean, you very rarely find this in, the, in high grade. Only three have been graded higher, which just tells you how tough it is. The, the standard um, centering corner wear, it was hard to, to keep these things nice. And a uh, really nice Bart star. And John Unitas, another near mint eight. Got the classic haircut. Fantastic one. Yeah. Uh, these are just these are just such cool pieces. Because you've got you've got two photos of them. You have two shots. You've yeah, got shout out to the art directors on this because landscape style, you got both images split between. You get the action shot, the, the action, portrait shot. And then you've got that. Yeah. And and yeah, I like sure. how they spaced off the colors too. They really jump out. They did a wonderful job on these. 9750 right now. It's got a 15,000 estimate. So it's well on its way. What do we got for time? An hour and 18 minutes yet. So I know people are kind of getting their strategy together and um, getting their bids and all that kind of thing all set up. So, you know, you still haven't have an hour and 18 left, but a really solid Unitas. And, you know, you're seeing football stuff really go up because, you know, it's the most popular sport and that's going to lead to people collecting and you always collect the icons and that's one of them. You know, and this year things have just exploded. Football cards definitely uh, mm -hmm. on the modern side, but I think when football season starts cranking up again and people are going to start thinking about it, uh, they yep. added an extra game this year. How about that? Big fan of that. Uh, I think we're going to see a nice little uptick on this vintage stuff. So tonight's a good time to uh, pick some of it up. Absolutely. And uh, underrated favorite of mine coming up next here. This is the 1967 Topps Joe Namath, number 98. PSA Jim Mint 10. Wow. I just like this portrait of him. Uh, a lot of times with these, I like to think of what the photo shoot was like. You know, <laughs> the photographer telling Joe Namath what to do. And he's like, look off into the distance. And it's kind of got that 52 tops mantle pose going on right there uh, with him looking off in the distance. And beautiful example of Broadway Joe here on a PSA 10, unimprovable, of course. Sharp corners, nice and even borders, and uh, great coloring there. The nicest athlete I've ever met. Really? Honestly, the nicest athlete I've ever met. Nice. I had to get something signed at a show, and it what took you, forever. What, what year are we talking here? Four, four years ago. Okay. And it took forever, and he, he, he talked to everybody, but he wasn't acting like, hey, yeah, hey, how's it going? Okay, get out of here. He was literally like asking you questions and having I'm, a conversation. Yes, and with every single person, and he was just a wonderful, warm man. And I mean, Namath, the guarantee, New York, all that in. You know, a lot of a lot of people love Joe Namath. Love the man. Yeah, just a wonderful guy. Why don't, well, at least, why don't you talk about one of his cards, Tony? I'm up with Tom Brady, I thought. Oh, are you? Uh, hold on. Let me make sure, though, here. No, follow the list here, Tony. Come uh -oh. on. Uh-oh. Follow direction? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure you want me to do that? <laughs> I mean, you do what you want. Uh, you're a rule breaker. You do you? But I thought you were going to talk about that 1970 tops, Joe Let's, Namath. Hold on. Let me see. No. I mean, I can talk about it if you I've like. Got, I've got Tom Brady. I can contenders. talk about Joe Namath all, right. all day. So we got the 1970 tops. Say PSA Jim Mint 10. Pop one, the only Jim Mint 10 right here. That's, so that's amazing. Good. There's only one. Yeah. I that mean, with the white me borders, well. you would think there would be at least some of them out there. Cool design. I like how the name and the uh, team name is kind of coming out at you on the banner. Nice dynamic action there. But a cool card, like we talked about, you know, when you're talking about Pop One with a PSA 10, that's become really attractive to, it's always been attractive to people in the hobby, mm -hmm. but people on the outside that are coming in know what that means and that best of the best, that's what you need right there. Yeah, exactly. That's what everybody's wanting. So uh, we had this estimated at 20,000 to 24,000 right now. Uh, with an hour and 15 minutes left. I'm, too. I'm not surprised in the slightest. Yeah. I mean, if, if you have, you know, you everybody wants the highest grade. Well, if there's only one, you know, how do you put a price on that? Exactly. As, as Chris Nerritt would <laughs> will say Chris to me. Chris Nerritt will put a price on anything. How do you, so. He will. <laughs> how do you put a price on that? Have we talked wax yet tonight? 
Let's do. We have wax. not talked wax. Real quick, I got the 2017 Panini Select Football Factory Sealed Box. In 2017. Right who was that? Was that? Oh man, there are so many good ones in here. Now it's got Wince on the cover. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll, well see. We'll see what happens. But 12 packs with five cards each. You get two autographs, one memorabilia card, and 14 prisms in each box. A lot of great ones, rookie debuts in here. You got Patrick Mahomes, heard of him. Uh, Deshaun Watson. Wait, Miles he's been around that long? Though. Garrett. Wow. Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and George Kittle. In That's there. a great so, rookie class. Yeah, a lot of potential Hall of Famers in there. Some that, that people is. would say would get in already right now. Uh, so That's a great class. A lot of potential there. 300 card base set. Uh, three different subsets, the concourse, the premiere, and the field level, and uh, different levels of prisms as well. Really popular set, and I'm expecting some fireworks tomorrow night. Modern stuff closes tomorrow night. 1980 and more recent is tomorrow night. We split them up this time. Good idea. Vintage and modern. That's good idea. Uh, so you can dabble a little in both, but that's a great modern wax. But we also have some great vintage wax too. But first... Let's talk about the uh, 2000 Playoff Contenders Football Unopened Hobby Box. You know who we're talking about there, Tony? I've got one on my screen I'm looking at uh, <laughs> coming up here. So, yeah, I mean, that uh, there's just not a lot of those remaining, those unopened boxes. And, I mean, they were yeah, a lot of them sealed. are being opened. So yeah. uh, I see that a lot. So if this is one, maybe you think, hey, everybody's going to open them up. Every time one gets open, my unopened box less. gets rarer. Absolutely. Uh, and goes up in value. But yeah, price is soaring for Brady's rookie, of course. Uh, these average two autographs inside each pack. And still got the playoff cellophane intact for this one. That's an important point. Uh, 20 grand, the estimate, and it's at 23. And I think it's going to go mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. So much potential. Either way you go. Uh, good for breakers, good for those who are going to sit on it for a while. So do what you like. I you say. can't go wrong with Brady. You cannot go wrong with Brady. And I mean, you know, everybody is like, well, if you went to another one, what's, Tampa what's Bay Buccaneers say? agree. Oh, my God. <laughs> geniuses. But I mean, honestly, I mean, everybody's like, well, how much more can this stuff go up? Well, he went to another Super Bowl. What he's done. They're bringing well, the whole team back. I First know. time that's happened. They're going to be the 30 years or something. Yeah. Um, so Odds on favorites. and Squad's back in town. Yeah. You know who they're opening up against? Yeah, is that is Dallas that Cowboys, that's in that's Thursday in Tampa. opener yeah. in Tampa? They're going to get the rings, and then uh, can they get beat? Jack's going to show Brady how it's done. The next time, Brady here first. All right, here breaking first. news, breaking news, Mike, <laughs> Mike Provenzale. All right, let's talk about some Brady cards. Why don't All we? right, two thousand playoff contenders. You could get that in this box, uh, or in in the box that is being offered tonight. Uh, this one extremely high grade, Beckett graded mint nine with a ten autograph. Uh, that's his rookie rookie era autograph as well. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't sound like like that quite anymore. Um, wonderful investment piece. I just uh, you're seeing his stuff go up, and I think it's going to continue to go up because he's basically the Michael Jordan of football. Now he kind of I mean, is like a Michael Jordan. Would you say Michael Jordan's the Tom Brady of basketball? You could say that. Yeah, I mean the hardest sport to dominate. Sure. And a guy wins one Super Bowl. That's a career. To win seven is is unimaginable. You know, we're, we'll look back at this card someday and say, "My God, they only had an eighty thousand estimate right now at sixty grand." But um, you know, this is another great, this great potential. And if he wins another Super Bowl, or if he doesn't win another Super Bowl, it's a great investment. And uh, you just can't go wrong with Brady. And uh, you know what I saw? Speaking of Jordan Brady coming up in our platinum auction that next month. Michael Jordan, Tom Brady signed basketball. I've never seen that before. Uh, and you know, just think about it, how expensive the upper deck stuff has always been. And now Brady's probably what, fifteen hundred just to sign, you know, to sign a piece of memorabilia is probably fifteen hundred. Is he even doing signings? I mean, he's only doing that? fanatics and it's very expensive. And I don't know if he's just doing private stuff. I don't know if he even if he's even doing that. That will go for a huge number. Because Lord knows the guy needs the money. Uh, his family. Especially. He's very smart the way he does it, though. He doesn't sign too much, and if he signs at the stadium, it looks really bad. Yeah. So he's. I, I give him credit calling for out, uh, uh, Mr. Brady. Brady. Well, I had a guy who was at a show in in in, uh, in in the Boston area, and he he showed me one, and I said, "I bet it's real because it looks so horrible." And he said, "Yeah, my his granddaughter got it or something, you know, and uh, it looked just terrible." 
compared to what his paid signing is. But very smart, doesn't sign too much, so it keeps his autograph valuable. Yeah, there you go. You gonna talk about another Brady? Two thousand. So we, Don we should say we have one guy's incredible Tom Brady collection. Uh, we sold some. In I was gonna say we auction. had some like a while back. We've didn't got we? some more. So these next few Bradys we're talking about are all from one guy's collection. He had every variation of every Brady rookie card. Most of them tens, a few nines, but incredible collection. So this is one of those. A pretty smart man, whoever he is, because my goodness, who would have thought? Early early adopter of Brady. Mm -hmm. he said, and he looks like a. Darn genius. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. 2000 Donruss Elite Brady. And I was when I was looking at this card, you look at the borders on these things. And, yeah, it's got this, the, the curved border on the upper left corner. But with that black border on the bottom and those, those, those glossy borders, it, they just chip so easily. This one's number two out of only ten, um, which ten was his college number, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, one of the toughest Brady cards to find, especially of, of, of his rookie era. Uh, right now it's at 31000 and – the estimate on this is a hundred, so there is room to. That closes tomorrow night. Tomorrow so night, so there's some fireworks. Yeah, forty-five people tracking it, seven bidders, which is a pretty good start. Um, this, that's when all your bids really come in is that last day. But um, you know, the excitement level for for Brady fans and Buccaneer fans, it's amazing how many Patriot fans still love him. Well, I mean, can it you, wasn't a can bad. You blame ending. them; they had nothing forever, yep. and then just domination. Uh, you know, it'd be like if Tim Duncan had gone to a different team. Spurs fans weren't. How do you there. not? How do you not either. like them? That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. So moving right along, we got the 200, 2000 SPX Tom Brady. This is a Jim Mint 10, number 435 of 1350. I like this one. He's staring you down like you're the receiver. The pass coming right at I'm you. I'm open, Tom. Limited edition. This should do 40K easy, I'd say. All from the same collection. This one is also from that same collection, the 2000 Playoff Momentum Tom Brady, something he certainly has often. <laughs> uh, plenty of that. PSA Gem Mint 10 as well. One of just 10 graded Gem Mint. Uh, and this is limited to 750. It's number 514. And uh, he's also got the 2000 Pacific Revolution Tom Brady. PSA Gem Mint 10, of course. One of just 10 graded 10 gin mint. Can you imagine so, what these would have cost back in 2000? They would have been in Nothing. like the quarter bin or the or absolutely. the dollar bin. They would have been absolutely, I mean, nobody, you could like have got this. these for nothing. I like this one. He's got the uh, Wolverine's helmet on, but they threw the Patriots logo in there as well. So whatever side you're into, there you go. That is you neat. got a cool card after the uh, quick release he's so famed for. Um, but yeah, a lot of amazing Brady cards uh, from that collection and a few others from outside that collection. But those are all going to be going down tomorrow night. Uh, Tony, let's take another quick break. We gotta, we're going to switch back over to baseball. Don't worry. we got some more baseball. I've got some. And uh, one of my favorite departments at Heritage, I call their auctions a lot, comics. is the Urban Art Auction. Okay. Oh, I love the comics. I'm going to talk all night. We'll get into some of the comic stuff we have in our auction a little bit later, but let's check out some highlights from the Urban Art Auction. Art department's doing great. A lot of fun stuff they have in there. Uh, if you've never been into art and you want to kind of, I think right now that's a great way to kind of get into it. Uh, it's a lot more uh, interesting stuff in there and easy to learn about, easy to find what you like. And the guys in our urban and modern art department are a lot of fun too. But 
Let's start with the big board, Tony. What do you well, got? Let's go. Hold on. Give me one second here. <laughs> I threw he caught you. me off guard, I know. folks. I threw you. I said start with this, and then bam. 53 an tops. Complete set. Went from 35 to 4,100, so there's a nice little battle going on for that set. 61 tops. Santo. PSA 9. 625. Let's see. The 54 Aaron. Uh, SGC 4 is at 2,700. Um 73 tops basketball, 8,500. So you're seeing that stuff move quite a bit. Uh, 61 bas flip basketball near set, 7,000. So starting to get those bids coming in right now. And you got just over an hour to get your bids in before extended bidding begins tonight at 10 p.m. Central Time. All the vintage closing tonight. So 1979 and earlier. Year I was born, Tony. That's yeah, how that's, that's how they. Is decided. that what? Uh -huh. Is that what Ivy said? Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna okay. <laughs> he talked to you before he made that decision. Yeah, he has the only time he's ever done that. So <laughs> we'll see how it works out. Uh, so back to cards, Tony. Let's do some baseball. Some vintage. Nineteen fifty six Jackie Robinson with the white back, which is pretty tough to find. Absolutely. Mint nine, and uh, which is almost impossible. There's only been seventeen graded. Graded to a mint nine. Um, so you know that, and there are none higher. Yeah. So you want the best of the best. This one's got a 60,000 estimate already at 42,000. Oh my goodness, 42,000. That's Jackie, kind of symbolic. Deservedly so, as someone who's seen huge increases you have, you've all seen across the board, memorabilia, for everything cards. for everything of his. And, you know, probably one of the most important, probably the most important baseball player in, in the history of the game. Absolutely. Um, what he went through and also with the World Series and the Hall of Fame. And unfortunately, he passed away young, so he didn't get to, you know, you got to hear his story, but you didn't. I wish he would have lived a little longer, you know, so people could have appreciated it. Could him have made it into more. the 80s when the hobby really started. The yeah, boom been exactly. Out there. Uh, he would have been super popular, but – yeah, over the last, his stuff has always done well, of mm -hmm. course, an icon. Uh, but over the last year and a half or so, as we've seen this rise, Jackie's definitely been one of the focuses. Yeah, yeah. his stuff has really gone up quite a bit, as it should. No, of I course. mean, as it should. What's up next? Well, up, ne Keep up next, I, I've seen this man's face a lot in the last two months. I mean, a lot. <laughs> 1960, Willie McCovey, rookie. Uh, I didn't, I, I knew he was good. But I went and picked up his collection, talked to his his wife, and my goodness, it just what quite a life, what a life lived, and uh, how good he was early on uh, was amazing. And Very cool collection. We've got the Willie McCovey collection coming up in our August Platinum Auction. It's going to open this Sunday, buddy. Um, but yeah, one of the cool things about those collections when they have so much stuff is you really get to dive into the life. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew Willie McCovey knew about him, but you really discover everything about them uh, and collection is really yeah. it's fun breaking it down and seeing it broken down because uh one of one of my coworkers he broke down the entire collection and did just such a fantastic job and we got a helmet we photo match the helmet and we get the uniform we think we photo match you know just just how you how you're putting together a puzzle and you really are and just these different awards when he received them and just it, it's it's a really nice collection featuring everything from his mvp to to game used items to you know photos his first his first photograph from 1945 yeah, his childhood, childhood photo photograph. just a, just a great cross section of his Love life awards uh, mm -hmm. big golfer we got a bunch of his we've golf got a bags. lot of i had to lift those up we've got a golf bag photo matched for yes, him we do. got a portrait done with the golf bag uh, a lot of apparel and things like that uh, some very personal <laughs> items uh, so if you're a Giants fan, McCovey fan, uh, there's something or just for baseball you. fan, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's and something it's for, for you. You can find in there, and it's and it, you don't have to, you know, spend twenty thousand. You can buy something for a couple hundred, let's yes. say, just to have a piece of McCovey. And this card here, uh, one of the nice ones you're going to find, eighty-seven fifty right now, and with an estimate of twenty thousand. So uh, and that one trophy the nice on the card. We have we Willie have, McCovey's version we of have that, that trophy. That, that top is trophy. in the auction. So cool. Um, did not realize they actually got one. I know. <laughs> I thought that was, I mean, I remember seeing that as a kid. I'm like, oh, it's kind of hokey. It's kind of neat. I didn't realize that was an actual award. I thought they just put it on the cards. Yeah, there it is. On yes. top of the top hat. Love that. You can see that, that at the National. Says, yeah, come by the National booth, 824. All right, Tony, more baseball. 1968, this Nolan Ryan. 
Um, SGC 10, we all know how hard this card is to find in high grade. We always say it's centering, but corners on these are, you know, they 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 just didn't stay nice. Um, they chipped easily. The corners did. The centering has always been difficult on these. You want the best of the best. This is it. And SGC does a wonderful job. They grade very difficult, according to a lot of people in the hobby. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting a ten, you are getting a ten. Uh, one of the nicest you're ever going to find. And this got 150 estimates at seventy thousand right now. It's one of the most important rookie cards in it the is hobby. it is I well mean. when you and i were you know it was popular of course in the 60s but when you and i were growing up that card had a had just a renaissance i mean that card just had, just came back in everybody's life everybody our age wanted that card and when he was still playing he was still playing <laughs> he was still playing at a high level yeah, he was. that's the thing and of course i couldn't afford one but that was a dream card for a lot of us growing up and Oh. Yeah, and I was growing up right here in Dallas. You got to see got him to see in person. I in never fact, got to see him pitch in person. One weekend, we were deciding which game to go to. They were having a homestand, playing the Sox. Should we go Saturday, Sunday? We decided to go Sunday. Of course, Saturday was the Robin Ventura game, and we we ended. You up going missed to the, it by a day. The game after. Wow. <laughs> oh my! Lord. I was I never watching knew it. it on TV, and my dad just looked at me. We were just like, do it, do it. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, baseball here. Hold on, Tony. I'm gonna have a turn here if you don't mind. I'm gonna Hurry take. Up. It, I'm gonna take it back. You know how far we're going back? Way back. Way back. <laughs> this is 1887 in 370 Lone Jack Arlie Latham. There better be some mustachery here because oh, I know how much you love I it. I do. I do. Uh, okay. Of he's course, got one. there's okay. some great mustachery here. Uh, yeah, zoom in on that. Uh, love the uniforms from this era. Can you imagine players nowadays wearing a hat like that? I, you know, but it makes me think of the Eddie. Uh, yeah. I think of the Eddie playing. That's an unbelievable. Major League style. Baseball bring back the stripy hats. Is all I'm saying. Uh, so this is from the John Ash right. collection. Remarkable collection. A lot of very early cards and memorabilia. This is one of them right here. If you want to get the attention of a passionate 19th century collector, simply utter the words "Lone Jack." This issue is. Really tough. Uh, the only Lone Jack issue uh, series issued right here. It's just 13 cards, and it's right at the top of the list for rarest issues. Uh, very cool one. It showcases the players of the world champion St. Louis Browns. And uh, this one is Arlie Latham and SGC Good 2. There's only three graded examples of this card. So if you want one, you should get this one. Um, Latham. Career total of 742 stolen bases. He's still wow. seventh all time. Seventh That's all time. That's amazing. Can you believe that? Um, he became a player coach for the 1909 Giants. And at age 49, still the oldest man to steal a base in Major League Baseball. Really? 49. Imagine that. Uh, and after he retired as a player, he became what is acknowledged as the first full-time base coach in baseball history, <laughs> um, a mainstay of the major leagues. Now, every level, really, I mean, even little leagues, you got a base coach out there to make sure people run the bases correctly. But um, And then after retiring from baseball completely, he traveled to Great Britain where he organized baseball matches for soldiers during World War I and taught baseball to the British. And then... He worked in baseball as a press box attendant. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this man was a baseball lifer. Uh, really unknown name out there, but uh, a lot of, uh, you know, you can win some bar bets right there with the uh, seventh all time in, in steals. That's amazing. I mean, to oh, last that long. 130 I mean, years ago. Um, and probably he's going to stay right there. I was going to say, with, with, with today's lack of base running. I just can't imagine anyone's cracking that top 10 at all. No. Um, so SGC is only graded only 14 cards of seven different players for this entire set. So this is a true rarity in every way, shape, and form. Uh, so cool card. Let's do another old one right here. It's 1914 Polo Grounds game, Honus Wagner Strike. PSA Mint 9, Tony, over 100 years old. None higher than this one right here. And, of course, you've got Wagner, uh, the card games. I like the card game cards. Uh, really tough to find those in high grade as well. It's available only for a single season as part of a box set, uh, monotone portraits. And you can easily identify them by on the back. There's a panoramic view of the polo grounds. 
and uh oh that's cool yeah uh, i like that very artistic really depiction there love the frame on it. it's just a beautiful card especially in a in a mint nine um and this is the wagner with the more scarce strike gameplay variant one of six graded mint with none higher so a uh, really cool rarity there i'm picking out some you may not have even heard yeah of i before. never knew of that one i love Tony. the back of that one though yeah, i love that cool. panoramic um the back almost as good as the front I, on that I one, agree. which is a rarity. I agree. And I'm going to keep going with these rarities, Tony. 1909, T92, Crofts Coco, Cy Young here, PSA X5. Pop one, none higher at X5. So uh, E92 is usually represented by Dockman and Sons. That's the E92 most people are familiar with. With This is the scarce Crafts Coco brand back. Uh, some great blazing colors in this issue, and this is a good example of that. Um, nice corners on it for a near mint, no creases. PSA has graded only two examples of this card, and this is the higher graded <laughs> of the pair right there. Cy Young, so like we've been talking about, Legends and Pop One None Higher. This is one right here that there's only two out there, basically, and this is the highest graded one, so grab it while you can. Absolutely. And then why stop there? So 1911 T205 cycle, Christy Mathewson, PSA X plus 5.5, pop one, none higher for this scarce variant. And these are tough, given those gold, those gold borders, really tough on these. Yeah, this, without question, one of the most beautifully produced sets ever. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Stunning portraits, the colors, the fine detail, and that rich gold metallic Border, the perfect adornment to encompass the mini masterpiece of lithographer's art right here. And I uh, love the portrait, just the look on his face, all of it's good. Uh, the Cycle brand and only the Cycle brand lists his win-loss record from 1908 as 37 wins and one loss instead of 11. I mean, he was good, but he wasn't that good. So this is the <laughs> one loss error variant. Um, he still had a 1.43 ERA. They got that. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. Maddie's total T205 pop is 750 in entries. This rare version is represented by just 25 noted on the census, and this is the highest graded example wow. of that. So another one, uh, people love error cards, yeah. of course, and uh, – this is a obscure one, but a cool one that they were like, hey, he probably only had one loss. So it's <laughs> Christy Matthews. Uh, but a beautiful card, super rare, and uh, pop one, none higher. We've been talking about that a lot tonight. This is a good example of it. All right, Tony. I got to try and top that. And, yeah, go oh, ahead. Right. Drop some knowledge, All right. Tony. Let's hear it. From the, from the notoriously difficult 1971 top set, you, we talk condition all the time. This one here with the black borders – you could open up a pack and chip the corner just, you know, so easily back in 71. This one here, Thurman Munson, the beloved Yankee captain. PSA mid nine, pop four with none higher. The best Munson card you could probably, this is the best Munson card you could, you could ever own. And it's got that great tops rookie of the year trophy on it. Uh, this one here, mid nine at 50,000 right now. Great action shop. And, um, this is his first full card. Yes. It's rookie card he shared. This is the first full one, but this one is so hard to find in good condition. This is the best of the best. And, um, you know, it's not like there's going to be a lot more of these ever getting ever getting released or being found. These are just so difficult right off the bat with those black borders. And, and he um, nailed it with the action shot, especially for I a catcher. Yeah. Cool one. Very and, cool. And no mustache. You know, that's I'm early months. Of that, but, uh, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I just swore, guys. I'm sorry. But no, just a, a really cool action shot. 71 Munson. Uh, just such a tough card to find. Absolutely. Especially in that grade. All right, Tony. I'm going to take it back again. This yeah. is a cool one. I noticed something very interesting about this one. This is the 1907 Wolverine News Ty Cobb Portrait. SGC Pour One. But... The rarity, you'll excuse the uh, grade there. But look at the portrait here on Ty Cobb. A few cards offer a portrait of Cobb that captures that fire, steely determination, drive, demeanor, honoriness, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. Uh, man, this one has got it. That's that portrait. perfect. 
Um, and the cool thing about these Wolverine news, they were used as mail co correspondence. So you can see the postmark and cancellations there, uh, both from August 29th and 30th, 1908. And on the back, this was actually used, Percy writing to a family member, and he says, Pa arrived and we're having fun. They're just like us, Tony. I, Mom, Pa, ago, love it. Letting them know oh. now it might have taken two weeks for them to find <laughs> out that Pa did arrive. Pa was probably back already, and he got <laughs> that got one. It. But I love that uh, cool piece of history. It's a little bit of like a memorabilia aspect to the card that uh, some insight to what life was like in 1908. Uh, Percy writing the folks, tell them, pause here. It's cool. We're having fun. Um, and, and you got Ty Cobb looking over them. Yeah. I mean, that exactly. is such a look. If, if he was smiling, it's up, something would be wrong. Yeah. I mean, that is his. There's game only face. a couple cards where he's smiling and not that one. This you want that. Opposite. You want that <laughs> yeah. with that, with that very angry. You I'm know, gonna... in 1908 was when Detroit was really becoming a player, a dominant team, Cobb two. Um, that's one of only nine graded by SGC. So super rare card. That's a good one. Uh, uh, yeah, very cool one. I like it a lot. Uh, what do we got next? Oh yes. 1947 W602 sports exchange, Babe Ruth. You familiar with this? I'm not. Uh, take a look. This one's a PSA mint nine pop one, none higher. Well, you've said there that. You you've I said know. that today. A few I times. did look for them and there's a lot in here. Uh, Really great auction, especially if you're looking for unique things and top level items um, and top level items, you know, that aren't six figure items. You know, there's a lot of uh, pop one and higher that you can get for under five figures in here, too. So whatever level collector you at, we've got something for you. Uh, this was a large promotion of 108 cards, uh, but it's pretty elusive for collectors. I've never seen this one. Before. I haven't either. Um so cool to see it cross through our doors. Uh, circulated as six player, seven by 10 uncut panels is how they were. And the individual cards were printed with frames of uh, yellow, red, and green. You can see this one's the red. Uh, precisely cut card of Babe Ruth right here with the red border. Only two cards total have been graded by PSA to date. And this is the... And this is the highest graded this, example. A, and it's a PSA nine. example. It's not one of those where it's like, there's only two, this one's the highest, and it's a three. This is a mint nine mm -hmm. right there. So very cool card. Uh, got the scowl from Ruth there, which is kind of unique for him. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, usually he had the... Uh, the big smile. Yeah, and... a more jovial appearance, but uh, very cool card and a rare one. Uh, one that if you buy it, probably when you show it off, people are going to say, I've, I've never, never seen, seen that. that. Yeah, exactly. There you go, which is what you want to hear. All right, Tony, back to you, buddy. The question that Mike Provenzel asks all the time, to open or not to open, mm -hmm. here you have a chance to get a whole bunch of Ricky Henderson rookies, and now with them going for, you know, into six figures for a gem mint 10. High six figures. I mean, uh, almost it, 200. Yeah, almost 200. 24 uh, unopened boxes. Of the 1980. Oh, I'm sorry. These are vending. I'm sorry. These are vending cases. So you got 24, 500 count boxes of vending. Um, it's a vending case with. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> oh you my can goodness. Pop, you can pop a few open. You save a few. You could do that. <laughs> you could do that. Now it is wrapped. So I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you, if you're feeling lucky, by all means. Just think about how much fun that would be, Tony. Oh my God. Bust everyone open. And I love that uh, that the sticker on the side, you know, it's got that like the inventory sticker. And I mean, that was a little before my time. But, uh, <laughs> a little before. A little, just a couple of years <laughs> before I was collecting. But uh, I mean, this one here, there is a lot of potential. If you um, want to try your luck and find a nice, uh, who knows, you may find more. Our our description mentions tw you know on, a, on an average probably twelve to sixteen examples. You've got a good chance. You know the corner should be solid if you get good centering. You 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 may have a so very Tony says bust them all open. Buy I'd this, say a few uh, for forty grand. What's the estimate here? Uh, that's what it is. Yep, yep. It's right. It's just a little below that now. Well, it's at twenty right now, but uh, I mean, you say you bust it open, you get one ten. It's paying for the whole thing. It is, and everything else is free. Yeah. And you're going to make a lot of money, too. <laughs> I don't know. So Tony says open it. I say hold off. A uh, piece of history right there. It is. Um, oh, very cool 
unopened piece right here. The 1948 Bowman basketball. I saw you posted this. Yeah. I saw you 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 I, did a I post saw on it this. today, had to post about it, and we should definitely talk about it. Uh that's so a crazy is item. 1948 Bowman basketball, unopened wax pack. It's PSA near oh mint. Oh my goodness. Mint eight. There's only two graded examples out there. This, of course, is the finer one. Um, but wow, what a rarity. Love the graphics on it too. Mm -hmm. Basketball going into it. Um, I would not bust this one. No, open. no, no. Uh, I mean, I, I like the way that it presents in the in the slab, and it's a high grade as well. I would not open that. Now, in a very important set. There, I mean, the Mikans in there. Of course, that's what you'd be looking for. Um, you know, it wouldn't be till fifty-seven till there was another basketball set. Yeah, yeah. Yep. fifty-seven. So an important set. Um, man, I would say it would be a shame to bust this one open. Yeah, because yeah. uh, that's one. There's only two out there. Uh, you just buy this one. Hope the other guy rips it open. <laughs> Whoever has <laughs> then that you got the only one. one. Then you got nice. the only I one. I like it. I like uh, it. But yeah, man, I'd never seen that before. Mm -mm, uh, mm. You say that a lot when you work at Heritage. You do. Very cool. Pop and, one, none higher. I hear that a lot too. Though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little more basketball. We also got a 1961 Fleer basketball complete set. Uh, beautiful, beautiful set all the way it around. Is, and is. a lot of important cards in there. Um, man, and look, it's just blazing off the page. The colors on those right there. Um, so yeah. Really important set, 66 cards. Um, it's 11% near mint, 74% X to X mint, 15% VG to VGX. So a real quality set. Uh, if you've always wanted to own one, man, there's so many important cards in there. You can get the whole thing right here. Um, estimate 12 grand, I think. Um, it's exceeded that. Wow, already. But, you know, a lot of those cards are so important. They're just going to appreciate and value the West, the Chamberlain, of course. Um, You've got 43 minutes to uh, yeah, decide to if you want to bid on this. <laughs> I, I say we're, do it. We're, we're getting down there. <laughs> All right. And uh, next, one of my favorite cards in the hobby, truly underrated card. This is the 1974 Bill Walton rookie card. <laughs> Um, and it's definitely a PSA from the, from the Jim front. Mint 10. And uh, as we talked about, and obviously uh, I'm a devotee, but the hair and facial hair combination right here is off the charts. Uh, you know, he is just a character. There's no other way to describe He's it. He's a treasure. Uh, love him or hate him. Yeah. Uh, he is so entertaining and such an integral part of basketball right now after his career. Um you know, injuries slowed his career. I was going to say, if he didn't, if he wasn't had, I mean, he was one of the best college players ever. Yes. And who knows what would have happened. And he had a lot of the Blazers. Yes. Uh, won their only title. And he's looking tough here, which I'm not buying it just because we know how he is <laughs> now. Uh, but a cool card. PSA Jim Mint 10 rookie card for a, an absolute legend. And then next is the 1981 Tops Larry Bird. Number four, also in a PSA Jim Mint 10, his first solo card right here. And we had a crazy result for a Our PSA 10 one. earlier. I believe it sold for over 40000 I think it was even more. Yeah, so a lot of potential. Cool image, too. Uh, a lot of green going on in the background there, which is a nice combination. That uh, great jacket, that great shooting jacket. I had that card, but mine had a big pinhole in it. <laughs> yeah, I traded for Probably it. Probably a crease, too, I'm guessing. Oh, a lot of creases. But yeah. interested to see where this one goes tonight. It's at 11000 right now. It's definitely going to go up from there. Uh, maybe we'll get another crazy result. But a, a cool card. Everybody knows the rookie card, of course. This is the uh, first, first actual solo yep. card. Um, so a good one. And interesting to see what happens with that. Mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. find out uh, later tonight. Yes. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, you're right. It's going to be later. I was going to say we'll find out in 41 <laughs> minutes. But that's when... Things really start to get interesting here. All right. And what do we have next? Oh, yeah, of course. 1996 Topps Chrome, Kobe Bryant. Kobe material doing great. Just a beloved superstar tragically taken too early. His material was always doing great. Um, but now it's just gone to another level. This is a PSA 10 as well. Uh, great image of Kobe. And then we've also got the 1996 Topps Chrome. Kobe Bryant, 
uh, which is in a PSA Gem Mint 10. That's the next one coming up here. And we have a wide array of Co the refractor, um, a wide array of Kobe cards. So whatever you're looking for, we've got it for you. This one's the 97 Topps Chrome Kobe Bryant refractor. Maybe my favorite Kobe card. There's so many, so it's kind of hard to pick. Uh, but Those yeah, this, are this just so difficult. Yeah, and there's so the image tough. on this one's just fantastic uh, a lot going on i like it when you can see the crowd in the background get some of those expressions especially when he's going in for a slam and he's i mean look how look how high he is on yeah that, he's uh, gonna have to rim. watch his head there uh i liked it when he was wearing eight yeah i, I did too say. i did too yeah uh, I, I wasn't so a fan great one that. here the refractors appeared within one out of every dozen or so tops yeah. chrome packs yep. with 220 subjects in the refractor roster that makes the odds of pulling this card beyond 2,500 to one. Wow. So tough one, but you don't have to pull it. You can buy it tonight. There you go. Right there. Um, Tony, you going to take it back on this one? 1961, probably the greatest basketball player of all time. I know he's from a bygone era. Will Chamberlain um, was just amazing at everything on the court and off, I and guess, off too. It. <laughs> uh, a 61 Fleer near mint seven. Uh, you know, the one of the, you know, you talk, we talk about Mount Rushmore. This is one of the cards that's on the Mount Rushmore basketball cards. Um, you know, the quote, nobody loves Goliath is probably the best opening line that you could have yes. when you think of Wilt, uh, just a giant, but uh, I mean, he did stuff that will never be accomplished again. Um, this right now at 24,000, Incredibly difficult to find this card in high grade, and uh, this is one of the nicer ones that you will find. Yeah, and beautiful um, example of of, of and a must have for basketball clubs. Yeah, you gotta have yeah, he is team. definitely the guy. And up next, 1957 Bill Russell in a six. Again, pair those two back to back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't I, tell I, one story without the other. You know, I was talking to my coworker at lunch today. And you're not going to name drop here. I'm this? not going. to. No, it wasn't Tom Landry Jr. <laughs> and he, you know, he won two. So he won two college at San Francisco. Won two titles, an Olympic gold, and then 11 of 13 years he won rings with the Celtics. I think he got tired of winning. Uh, like, it, it, that that is like amazing. to finish your season with a loss. Yeah, he just didn't know. He just. I mean, my God, that is. And winning amazing. college titles at San Francisco. Exactly. Couldn't have been Forget an easy thing. It. And then to do it in the Olympics and then to have the career that he had. This one here is, is graded uh, X-Men 6 right now at 14,500. Um, another one of those cards, if, if you're collecting basketball, you have to own this card. Yeah, and I like that that one, he's playing defense, which is pretty rare on cards. And, uh, you know, that's just perfect for him. For him, yeah. Because he was a guy, he didn't knock the ball into the eighth row. He'd knock it to a teammate yeah, to keep the ball to in play. Exactly. So he was, I don't want to say ahead of his time, but um, he was ahead of his time. Yeah, he was absolutely <laughs> ahead of his time. You can definitely say that. Uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about your boy, Tony? It's coming up next right oh, there. I don't know who that would be. We got a Giannis signed 2013 go. Panini Prism. This was, yeah, this was done at, at, at a signing, and he inscribed Greek Freak. Good luck getting to him now. Get, good luck getting him to inscribe Unless you're that. You're working the Chick Fil A drive-through. Exactly, anyway. and you have to get you have, you'd have to order fifty uh, chicken nuggets with. Uh, I forgot what he got to drink, but uh, yeah, classic moment. Um, you know, he has been a good signer, but I don't know. You know, getting the inscription may be a bit of a challenge now. Um, you I know, think so everybody likes rookie cards autographed and. This is, you know, that's going to be his card. That's kind of his signature card. I know he's got inserts and that kind of thing. Have it signed with the inscription. Really cool concept right now. 1850. Gem Mint 10 autograph and a Gem Mint 10 grade. So uh, two kind of a rare examples there to, to get a Gem Mint 10 on both. Really cool. And now that he's a champion. Uh, <laughs> uh, you didn't see the you, fish bump. Been on screen I'm for that. sorry, I am. Uh, I'm still on Just cloud nine. Just the exuberance overflowing. I'm still on cloud nine. I mean, Tony's excited about the Bucks when they just missed the playoffs. So I can only imagine what he was like that night. I was. Uh, Nerd said I screamed like I've, he never heard a scream before. I, uh, <laughs> well, that was watching Game Five. Well, while we're on Giannis, before you get to that one, which is I'm shocked awesome. at the price. I, I was, wondered if you had seen that yet. 
I'm um, thrilled for the consigner. But we also have a Giannis NBA Top Chef tonight. Oh, cool one. Uh, apropos for his five block performance on uh, Tuesday night, sending him off the backboard. A few of them. Uh, this is a block where he blocks a pacer off the backboard. Uh, but a premium top shot here from Series 1, the initial release. Legendary from the top, number one of only 59. Um, you know, and Top Shot is an international audience. Giannis is an international player. So a good combination there. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where that ends up tomorrow it's night. Very, very. Because now you almost think of a more as defense. Just the, some of those crazy blocks. That was and the <sighs> Game 4. I'm getting chills, everybody. Game 4 block, too. The basically won the game uh mm -hmm. he does it all he, you know he should win defensive player of the year some year oh, oh he, he did. did that oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right laugh. go ahead tony i need this one i'm so happy I, I i picked this card up and we picked it up raw so you know the big thing is of course to get it graded i think we did a what a twenty thousand estimate on it 30 i'm sorry the absolute best scotty pippen card probably in the world 97, 98, Metal Universe, Precious Metal Gems. They did 100. Ten of them were green. The others, the other 90 were red. This is the very elusive green, 67,500. Uh, incredible. Out of all the all the cards, the chase cards, the, this has taken on a whole different level of collectability. And it, even the commons are just, you know, it's the best card of any of these players for, uh, for the most part. Yeah. And um, – it's kind of. I mean, the prices we got for the Jordan ones were yeah. off the charts. Yes, so and it's taken on. The, you know, that's going to raise them. All. Everything They're incredibly rare. Yes, they are. Uh, the green with only ten, uh, cool pose. Scottie it is Scotty Pippen going in for a dunk. I guarantee it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I saw that price earlier. I knew you would be very. Excited. I'm. I'm very very happy for. That wonderful and man. Go ahead and hit the red. We've got so the we've red. got the red as well. Uh, Ninety of these now. I like the color on the red. I mean, I know, you know, with his uniform being red, it's a really cool look. This one here is a BGS 8, 7,500 right now. Uh, let me see how many people are tracking it because that's a big indicator usually. 34 people tracking it, so um, there should be a lot more action on that one. Um, coming in tomorrow, a day and an hour. So we have, what do we have, an hour 33 before we are – no, I'm sorry. What do we have? 33 minutes 33 minutes i'm sorry Until i'm looking for i'm looking at begins. tomorrow my bad guys yeah you know telling time is in his strength that's what i'm <laughs> looking at but uh let's take a little break learn about another department at heritage uh very cool one our animation art department there's a lot of cool ones they have some iconic pieces from some of your favorite disney moments uh this is one that my kids are always begging me to buy something out of but uh for the most part i can't afford them <laughs> um, some great stuff. So take a look at what we have coming up in, in our animation art department. Hi, this is Jim Lentz, and welcome to Heritage Auction's signature animation auction. This auction has over 1,400 lots spread over three days this August 6th, 7th, and 8th. The highlight of the sale is over 100 pieces from Walt Disney's 1959 masterpiece, Sleeping Beauty. Production cells, animation drawings, storyboards, backgrounds, model sheets, and even master background setups. This sale also boasts the single largest inventory of original artwork from the hand of this film's art director and color style. Stylist, Disney legend inductee, Mr. Ivan Earl. The section of his work from his hand is nothing less than extraordinary. Signed by Walt Disney. This auction sees the return of the very popular Signed by Walt Disney section. This auction has amazing pieces that bear Walt Disney's actual signature. Pieces from Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Fantasia, Little Toot, as well as vintage photos and other pieces of Disney history. There's even a breathtaking Bambi master setup that is signed and dedicated to Mr. Mr. Norman Rockwell. Wow! The In the Beginning section and Cartoons Go to War section return with pieces from the hands of Windsor McKay from Gertie the Dinosaur, rare original Ub Iwerks Steamboat Willie artwork, early studio artwork, and the holy grail of Disney animation art collecting a rare black and white nitrate production sale on its key master background from Mickey Mouse in his last black and white short, Mickey's Kangaroo. There's also great studio World War II insignia artwork from Hank Porter that are in this sale, not to mention artwork from the studio's effort to support the war in the 1940s. 
The art and flair of Mary Blair returns with a special selection of never-before-seen Mary Blair originals from the Ted Berman collection. Mr. Berman was a 40-plus year Disney artist who worked in story and eventually became a feature film director for Walt Disney Feature Animation. His collection includes never-before-seen Mary Blair pieces from Johnny Appleseed, Cinderella, Susie the Blue Coop, to name a few. The sale also has Mary Blair pieces from such iconic films as Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, and Disneyland's attraction, It's the Small World. World. There's even a signed copy of her legendary little golden book, I Can Fly, from the Mary Blair Family Trust. This auction features part two of the Peter and Harrison Ellen Shaw archive collection. A rare 20,000 league under the sea published original painting highlights this amazing collection of stunning artwork. This auction has many pieces of art from the hands of Disney legend inductee Peter Ellen Shaw from his work at Walt Disney Studios. Many pieces from Peter's fine art career with Hammer Galleries as well as many hard to find sold out limited edition pieces he created for Walt Disney Art Classics, including his highly desired Mary Poppins pieces. Harrison Ellen Shaw is also represented with an amazing array of both his original paintings and his long sold out Disney limited editions as well. Some of his highly desired pieces that highlight this sale include pieces from Winnie the Pooh, Alice in Wonderland, Sleeping Beauty, The Chronicles of Narnia, and even Frozen. In addition to Disney legends Mary Blair and Peter Ellenshaw, the Disney legend collections are all over this auction. This sale has pieces from the Disney legend Ham Lusk, including his opening day Disneyland pass and his Academy Award certification for his work on Mary Poppins, Walt Paragoy's concept art for Jungle Book, Don Duckwell's prestigious Mouse Car Award, John Hench's artwork from Cinderella, Ken Anderson's stunning concept art from Jungle Book, Gustav Tegren's pieces from Snow White and Pinocchio, and supervising director of Snow White and Bambi, Mr. David Hand's Legend Award. Scrooge McDuck and Carl Barks return to our auction with a great selection of original artwork, long sold out limited edition pieces, rare bronzes, and great sells of Scrooge McDuck from DuckTales and Mickey's Christmas Carol. This is one of our best Scrooge McDuck sections we've ever put together. The art of Disney shines bright in this auction with the best of the best of production cells, animation drawings, concept art, storyboards, model sheets, and so much more from all your favorite films. Stunning museum-worthy pieces from Snow White, Fantasia, Pinocchio, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, 101 Dalmatians, and so many more. Great pieces include stunning works of art from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, and so much more from the Disney Renaissance. Mickey Mouse and his pals are represented in this auction with so many lots. Mickey and Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, Pluto, and even Winnie the Pooh are in this auction with one great piece after another. Disney theatrical short artwork is well represented in this sale. My favorite is a 1935 full nitrate cell of Chief Mickey Mouse from the 1935 theatrical short Mickey's Fire Brigade. The bronze and maquette section in this sale may be one of our best. Some of the highlights include Paul Wenzel's set of original feature animation maquettes from all the characters from Aladdin. These were given to Paul when he was working in Disney's consumer products. We also have amazing feature animation production maquettes from the Disney film Mulan. The bronze section includes a complete set of bronze issued at the park for Fantasia's 50th birthday. Also some pretty significant Disney service awards are in this sale, including Disney legend Don Duckwall's highly desired Tinker Bell Service Award, as well as a long sold out, highly desired Crazy Cat sculpture is also in this sale. And finally, the always popular, the art of the Disney ink and paint department is here. Stunning pieces painted on the lot at the famous Disney ink and paint studio using archived original artwork are in this sale. So many long sold out and hard to find pieces are here. Sleeping Beauty, Lady and the Tramp, Snow White, and so many more. In closing, we hope you agree that this auction is chock full of one of the best ever selections of Disney Studio animation art that we've ever offered. We hope to see you at our headquarters in Dallas for this auction, or be with us online at halive.com for this great three-day sale again on August 6th, 7th, and 8th. And remember, you can order a catalog for this sale at ha.com as well. On behalf of all the cartoonologists here at Heritage Auctions, we hope you win your favorite piece and they provide you with a lifetime of smiles. Stay safe, choose joy, and stay tuned. Very cool stuff there. They always have something great going on in their department. They do. They you do. Know, things like that, like Sleeping Beauty. You remember it from your youth, you know, and here's the cells and the artwork from it. Um, let's check the big board, Tony. Drum roll. 
I mean, we don't have sound effects, but I'll write that down as well. That's a Can you get that for the next. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look. Let's take a look. So we got a 61 Chamberlain, 30, uh, 1500, 17,000, 1960 tops complete set. 17,000. Wow. 61 tops near set, 22,000. So you're seeing it's a pretty good movement on that stuff. 2600, 1969 mantle, white letters, PSA 6. Um, another one moving, 1965 top baseball near set, 9750. So the set collectors are still buying. Getting to it. Getting to it. Absolutely. 25 minutes till extended bidding for session one. So tonight is vintage night. Uh, everything before 1980. And then tomorrow's modern, everything after. And then we've got final session on Saturday night. Same rules for all. Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time. Have to have your bid in before extended bidding begins to continue bidding on any lot. So let's talk a little more basketball. I'd be remiss if we didn't. The next big thing. The, oh my God. 2018 this guy is so Panini good. Contenders, Luka Doncic, the uh, rookie ticket auto in a PSA Jim Mint 10. Really nice blue, Mavs blue, Sharpie signature right here. Um, you know, disappointing end to the Mavericks season for sure. Uh, you know, another matchup with the Clippers. They couldn't get it done, but you got Jay Kidd coming in to coach him. Uh, Kind of similar players, surprisingly, but when you think about it, that just they have the ball in their hands, they facilitate. Um, so it should be interesting to see what happens. And I mean, unquestionably, he's on the rise. I mean, he's already a star. I mean, it's amazing how he is a triple double machine. Yes. And even if you think he's having a bad game, he's having a good game. Yeah. I mean, you rarely <laughs> does he. And he's just, it's not something you can just teach. He's just so. I don't know he's so effortless, so you know, just it's gonna be fun just, to watch him in the Olympics too. Yeah, they made it absolutely. And I mean, for the next what 15 years, he's gonna be relevant, he's gonna have that, he's gonna have the franchise relevant. And I always have been saying, I think Dallas should be more of a destination for free agents. Well, and I think you it live here, Tony. I know, and I, and I know how nice Tony's and how much here. I love that's it. what you got to tell. Uh, exactly, why? Hey, come hang out. With I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful city, and uh, you've you're you have a franchise player for. 15 more years and you know, one that will pass the ball. Yes. He'll say. Yes. He scores a lot. He can do everything. He's happy to pass. He can do everything. Uh, so here's a cool lot I saw that I definitely wanted to talk about. This is the 2011 Fleer Retro Precious Metal Gems Red Uncut Press Sheet. Uh, so we were talking about the Precious Metals earlier. This is the 2011. And it's oh, a wow. framed uncut sheet, 26 by 32. And Jordan cards autographed by Michael Jordan. Wow. So a cool addition right there. Let's see if Tommy can find which one it is. Where is he? There he is. Um, so inspired by the Real Precious Gems limited insert from Fleer's 97 Metal Universe edition. Uh, I hadn't seen an uncut sheet of it before. So pretty unique. And of course, signed by Jordan. But you got Michael Jordan on three cards, Olajuwon, LeBron, Clyde the Glide, David Robinson, Havlicek, Rodman, McAdoo, oh, Walt Frazier. Now we're talking Bill Lambeer made his way in there. Bill Russell, Tim Hardaway, Rick Barry, George Gervin, Elvin Baylor, uh, Elgin Baylor, Alonzo Mourning, Bill Walton, Larry Johnson, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, Larry Bird, and James Worthy wow. on there. So Go over hey, that. I want to hear that one more time. <laughs> can, you, can you please let me just do, read the description? You, okay, Tony. okay. Read the description. But a ton of legends on there. A really cool issue. So this is a unique piece and a great display one. Nicely framed uh, with the title of it there. And the magic words in the last year and a half signed by Michael Jordan. That's all you need. Could you imagine right trying to get that signed now? Oh, forget I it. I mean, you, how would you ever get to him, first of all? You know, it's, it's not going to happen. A big uncut sheet like that. That's a really, really cool piece and unique. Yes. Very unique. Absolutely. Um, another good modern one. The modern stuff, as we said, closes tomorrow <laughs> night. Uh, I like this one. The 2005 Upper Deck Rookie Debut LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony Draft Duos Autograph Card. Uh, legendary Draft, of course. There. One of the and greatest. Three. And... Uh, PSA Gem Mint 10. This is number four of just 25. And uh, I like the layout of this one. It's got the draft uh, graphics there. You know, and LeBron and Carmelo were such close friends, still are. Um, so a very cool card here. Uh, 
PSA Mint 10. It's one of just two graded examples on the PSA census. And this, of course, the higher graded one. Why else would we be talking about it? You know how we do. Um, and then, of course, got plenty of Steph in the auction as well. This is one I really like, the 09 Tops Chrome Steph Curry. This is the Refractor, number 101. BGS Mint 9. This is number 162 of 500. <clears throat> Uh, beautiful card. He's got that big smile. It's like He's got he, the baby face. It's like he knew he was just going to flip the league right on its head. And, uh, you know, like it or love it, how the league is right now with the shooting. I mean, you know, you remember when we were kids, people complained, all they want to do is dunk. Why doesn't anyone shoot anymore? And it was now, like a slow game, too. Yes. And now... Everybody can shoot threes. I mean, Giannis is hosting, hoisting he's, them he's up. Trying. Uh, Yoga <laughs> throwing them up. It doesn't matter who you are. They're shooting threes. Now everybody's like, they shoot They shoot too much. But uh, This guy, I don't want to say just change the game, but he really did change the game. Yeah. The way that it's played. And watching him in college, and he wasn't recruited by anybody. I mean, he went to Davidson. He wasn't really heavily recruited. He changed the game, and my goodness, it, it, just an incredible player. And I mean, Led the league in scoring this year, still at did. it. Wow. Yeah, he's fun to watch. I told the story before how just I sat at a Mavs game when they came here and I just watched him shoot in warm ups. And it was just, it was just so it was just effortless. It was like, were you keeping track? What was this person? I didn't, I didn't keep track. It just, <laughs> he just made it look so easy. I was like, how can I? He just makes, you know, it's just boom, boom, boom. Uh, <laughs> All right, Tony, what do you got over there? I've been hogging it. Oh, that's gonna oh, no, I got one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I you did. That's why I thought I, I should pull this out. We displayed this at the Dallas Card Show uh, <laughs> this weekend. A lot of people were asking about it. It's the 2019 Panini Prism Zion Williamson ball in hand. PSA Gem Mint 10 collection of 50, Tony. Wow. 50 right there. Uh, we had them all stacked up in a pyramid at the show. That's and, cool. Uh, a lot of that's people good... ooing and aahing over it, but just cool pose. A lot of people are familiar with the card. Very nice dealer lot here. 50 PSA Gem Mint 10s. So a huge collection and uh, going to make somebody very happy tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a beast. He is an absolute beast and he's he's the future. I mean, he's he is the future of the game. You know, you got Luca and you've got and you've got Zion. I mean, the, the league is in good hands. It's in very good hands with those two guys and Giannis. And I mean, there's. There's some very good sizzle right now. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> we haven't talked hockey yet. Love hockey. <laughs> Love hockey. And this card, I think Heritage Auctions has become known for this card above all else. The 1979 OPG. We've had hundreds of inquiries well, Heritage, on these. Heritage is the great one, so it's a good match. Well, I mean, I, I was gone. I was on a consignment trip when – when it sold for what, 3.4 or 4 point, what was it, 3.4? Mm -hmm. So I saw it in the news and I'm like, wait a second, we just sold for 1.8. What are they talking about? I didn't even realize that it had sold uh -huh. until so I came back. private sale, there's two tens. <clears throat> uh, we'd sold one in December for 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. And then earlier this year, private sale for over 3 million. That's amazing. So there's only those two tens. Got to imagine those are going to be staying in those collections. I don't think they'll be moving anytime them soon. For a little bit. But be just as beautiful or almost as beautiful <laughs> mid nine below and these are we all know what the rough cut we all know the centering we all know the corner wear on these things um you know we've we've taken in hundreds of inquiries on these things and you know the chance of getting a mid nine is pretty is pretty small yes. we've got one here Right now, the don't bit is that open those seventy nine op do not rocks. do not <laughs> because trust me idea. I have seen so few of those. You you know you once in a while you'll see one up in Canada at the show in Toronto, but they're so rare and we've gotten such good prices on the unopened boxes. Um, keep it unopened, especially if you have the uh, piece of tape on it too. Yeah, very important. Ooh, very important. Nice. Yes, nice. yes, Tony. But uh, right now, one hundred and fifteen thousand, uh, and that one is it's going to go crazy probably tomorrow. And I'll I say. That's the one exception to the cutoff for vintage modern. The, it is. Uh, it 79 is. 79 is in the modern <clears throat> side. Gretzky's a modern player. Mm -hmm. well, had to be in it. So that'll be tomorrow night. But uh, yeah, I expect a lot of fireworks for that. When you get a huge sale for a PSA 10 and or any 10 and there's only a few, a handful, you're going to see those prices go up for that yes, next level down. Everybody wants to get in. 
Not many people can spend a million dollars on a trading card, Tony. Mm -hmm. I know you can, uh, <laughs> but that's a very select company. So this is the next level down, a little more affordable, still huge numbers, of course, but uh, opens Absolutely. it up and I expect to see big things from that nine. Well, we also have its brother from south of the border, the United States, we have the tops. Right now we have a mint nine, which is very, very, very beautiful. Great, of course, great corners for a mint nine. Um, great centering. That one's at thirty three thousand. So um, the tops, you know, they're a little bit easier to get. Now this card in in a high grade is nearly impossible, though. Yeah. So um, great, great grade. Sixty thousand estimate. It's already at thirty three. Um, I could see this going for far more than sixty thousand, just because. I think so too. It's gorgeous. Though I mean, those corners are just razor sharp. And uh, it's the great one. It's his rookie card. I mean, you just can't beat it. And yeah, zoom in on those corners. There you go, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, get in there. <laughs> Jesus. No print dots either. You know, a lot of times you'll see print dots on those cards, but uh, this one is free of any of the uh, free of the imperfections that plague most of them. Yep. So just a great, great card of the one and only. The great one. The great one. All right, another great one. This is the 1951 Parkhurst. Maurice Richard, PSA near mint, mint plus 8.5. Uh, <clears throat> super important card from the comment here and the landmark Parkhurst issue. In Parkies. 51 there. You, you when go. you, when you go right. up to Toronto. <clears throat> you can tell you've Parkies. been to a show in Toronto. Oh, you know yeah. That. Uh, but Richard, the first player to score 50 goals in a season and 500 in a career. So big moment in hockey history. And, uh, I mean, he's just got a long list but of loved. awards. And Boom. honors, of course, um, Order of Canada in 1967 among them right there. Uh, but this is one of only three graded near mint to mint plus and only five higher. So right there at the top of the charts, uh, great card, a beloved card, as you said, and a very important one. Um, this one, very important as well. 1958 tops Bobby Hull. And this one's an SGC 88. Pop four, none higher. Super hard. Wow. It's a super hard card, of course. Um, so perfect registration on this one, which is very difficult for this issue. Uh, borders look fantastic. Sharp corners, great surfaces on both sides, of course. Very important card. Uh, just one of those heroes in Chicago will be there next week. So, of course, I had to talk about this one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Jordan, Peyton, Banks, and then Hull. You know, yep. that's the all Mount, four. That's the yeah. Mount Rushmore Absolutely. right there. And uh, just an incredible player and an important hockey card right here. And one of the finest you're going to find. Looking good in that tux. He as does. Well. He does. Who we got up next, Tony? Is it me? It's me, isn't it? It is me. Oh, yeah. Another important one, the Lemieux rookie, of course. I'm surprised. I mean, those things do just amazing. Yeah, it's... For a rather not... Uh, I mean, for a, more of a modern card. Another least. one that in the last year and a half, prices have really accelerated. The 85 OPG. Uh, this one's a PSA Gem Mint 10. We've seen some amazing results on it. Um, you know, there's kind of a while where... Gretzky kind of eclipsed him in the hobby, and it was just mm -hmm. like Gretzky's rookie was what everyone was into. Yeah, you know, four or five years ago, modern cards weren't getting really getting the respect they should. People are like, it's 85, it's modern. Um, but man, such an important rookie card, and uh, Jim meant 10 right there. Beautiful example. Love that one. Uh, it's at 27,000 right now. It's going to be closing tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to see a big number from that one you got the provenzale prediction all right right book there. it <laughs> book it um back to you tony as they say so in this in this industry getting rookie cards signed has become just a really really big deal and the athletes have taken notice now joe montana's charging i think i think it's upwards of a thousand to sign his rookie card whereas everything else he'll sign for 250 or 300 dollars so these Tony's got all these autograph prices no right? i just i just right I'm off the just, top of his head i I, 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 I was in i was in canada when was a um bobby uh bobby Orr was um was signing his rookie card for 700 hours and there was a line of people that gladly paid 700 dollars for him to wow. sign. and that was years ago and this is and i think this is a great piece to own you got an opichi Gretzky, a pretty high grade one at that, a PSA six. 
with a wow, Gem Mint 10 nice. autograph, which is a great idea to get because he could say tomorrow, you know what, I'm not going to sign my my rookie card anymore. Making these I'm very, very and difficult. And a lot of people, a lot of athletes have. They have. Uh, they have done it. They understand that the value has just gone up to such a level on the signed rookie cards. This one right here at 20000 and uh, I think it's worth every penny of that because uh, most athletes are not signing their rookie card at the same prices that they would sign something else. Right. And having the OPG in a relatively high grade. nine inscription on there too. Yes. It's the, just a, it, I think it's a great investment piece. I really do because he just, you know, he, he signs, but that rookie card is something special. Yeah. And a high grade one at that. Yeah, that's a unique one. You don't see many of those. So, no, uh, not signed. If you can't, if you can't afford the nine, which uh, I can't either. A lot of people mm -mm. can't. Uh, this is a cool option. Absolutely. As well. uh, let's stick with hockey and modern hockey here. We got the 2019 SP Authentic Connor McDavid, the clear cut rookie tribute autograph. Uh, fantastic card here. This one a BGS Jim Mint 9.5 with the eight auto. Uh, beautiful one. Uh, he was named the youngest team captain in the history of the NHL. Really? There's been a lot of young stars. Uh, so great distinction. And then, of course, he signed the richest contract in hockey history. Eight years, 100 million extension with the wow. Oilers. Uh, people love the 2019 SP Authentic issue. A great one. And the on-card blue marker autograph here. That's a uh, auto eight. And, you know, he's one of the biggest stars in the game right now. Like we were talking about Luca, uh, you know, these young guys that are just coming in and dominating. He's done that. And, and they're limited cards, card. too. Yes. It's not like when you and I were buying when they made millions and millions of them. Now, these are limited. If you want to get this one. And they're autographed, too. Usually yeah. you're going to have to be buying it at auction. And that's yep. what we're here for. Yep. Um, so let's take a quick break. We've got eight minutes until extended bidding begins and we'll talk a little baseball and see what's going on um oh yes our guitar department tony oh we my some, we got some rock stars big things going on now so let's take on a look at what they've got coming up so this this uh has got quite a story <laughs> it's it's been on like major records albums of ours uh mainly escape and frontiers and it is the guitar I played, Who's Crying Now On, and uh, uh, Stone in Love. But everywhere you hear like a Paul, this is the Paul on those records. And it was the first Les Paul ever to have a, a Floyd put on. Everybody thought I was crazy, and now there's a whole line without my name on it. <laughs> you know, just amazing sounding guitar. Uh, Gibson Pro Les Paul. Uh, Ebony fingerboard and maple neck mixed with mahogany and a, you know, a maple top. So it's got some snap to it, you know, and, and with the Floyd, it's just, it, it's like sings like crazy, this guitar, you know? Um, yeah. You can hear it's got like the snap from the neck and So, I mean, it sounds exactly the same. You can hear it, it's just every note rings like the record does because it is the same guitar, you know? This one went everywhere uh, on our Escape Tour and Frontiers Tour. And um, then actually made it on some other records too. Like I did uh, a record that was with all the, the original Santana guys but Carlos didn't want to join us, and so we called it a Braxis pool, and uh, we did a record, and this is all over that record. Uh, I played on many different records. This is Jan Hammer 
and myself, first two co-solo records, uh, Here to Stay and uh, Untold Passion. This is the same guitar, and I use it into a high watt uh, that I use with all the Journey stuff. And man, this thing has been on a lot of records. And still got the Ferrari sticker I put on the back, except it got chopped into because I put the sustainer in many years later. Very cool, uh, great sounding guitar to this day and uh, a lot of history. Very cool stuff there. The Neil Sh Sean collection from Journey. His guitar collection coming up. And Tony, he's going to be in Chicago when we're there. Journey's playing at Lollapalooza the weekend of the National. So if you're love to see Journey. Tony was just having a little snack there. I, I didn't have any beef jerky. I need some beef jerky. I love Journey, by the way. Big fan of 80s. You going to go see him on the Palooza? Closing Saturday night. Saturday? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll see. So. We'll see. Yeah. As my sainted mother would say. <laughs> also meant no at the time. Yes, I'm it sure. did. You're so right. what do we got going on the big board? We got four minutes left. Oh man, oh man here. Oh. I'm slipping. Oh, Tony. This is terrible. <laughs> oh, I got it. That's my first screen. I'm sorry. You got so many tabs open in there. I it's do. Giving me anxiety. 32 US Carmel. Babe Ruth, BVG3, 87.50 right now. Oh. Let's see. A lot of stuff moving around. I was watching the bid mm -hmm. board. A lot of people waiting to the last second to get their bid in. They're bidding on these sets. They're, bi they're bidding on these sets. 2,600 for 69 tops basketball complete sets. So you're seeing some action on that. Um, let's see. 3,600 for the Honus Wagner throwing SGC 2.5. Um, we got three minutes, so uh, I love this. 1951 to 55 Bowman and Red Heart Baseball Shoebox Collection. I love go. those. 350 plus 38.18. So spirited bidding on that. Um, 84 tops football cello. We used to call them cello when I was a kid. I think that Don't was ask just me you. Why. Yeah, it was just me. It was. <laughs> With the Dan Marino on front at 240 right now, so. You're starting to get the bids coming in. Um, the auction looks to be doing pretty well right yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. All right, rapid fire, some vintage baseball rookies in Jim Mint 10s and some cool numbers coming up. We, you know, we've seen a lot of the top-level rookies, uh, vintage and modern, getting some huge numbers. This one, 1961 tops, Juan Marichal rookie, PSA Jim Mint 10, currently at 41000 Tony. And I mean, it's a beautiful card. Love the, the smile and the portrait, all of it. And this is uh, just an incredible example. One of only six at Gem Mint. Uh, classic issue, of course, the 61. He's all top. smiles, but he was pretty imposing pitcher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it belies what he was going to serve up to you at the plate. That's for sure. Um, 65 tops, Tony Perez, the rookie stars, PSA Gem Mint 10. Pop Four, that's at 13,500 right so young now. There. I know oh he God. does. Another smile there. Um, I mean, this could be the Dave Ricketts rookie card, I guess, also. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I was thinking that. You know, but they gave Perez the uh, top half there, so they knew. Um, Somebody knew. Another great one, you know, a rookie card at the top level that, you know, the price hadn't been anything astronomical, but now people are recognizing. Hall of Famer. I mean, Big Red Machine. Same here. 66 tops, Don Sutton, rookie card. Um, Bill Singer there on the other side. PSA Jim Mint 10, pop four. That's at 18,500 right now. You know, only until recently you've become a five figure card. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to break 20,000 tonight. When you think of Sutton, you think of that big perm, and he's, he's a young, young kid yeah. in that one. And then the 66 tops. Fergie Jenkins, uh, with the Phillies rookies there. PSA Jim Mint 10 here. Pop on that. Uh, one of only seven in Jim Mint. That's at 21,000 already. You know, so a lot of these Hall of Famers that maybe 10 years ago, their rookie card, even in a nine or a 10, wasn't doing crazy numbers. Now people are recognizing, hey, I, if I 
I'm going to have to pay for it to get a Gem Mint 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here you go. And that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants that high grade. Yeah. They do. And it's so hard to find them in high grade. And they're just not a huge sample size of them out there. So they, just, they sell very rarely. There you go. What do you got? Tell I've me. got, you got now one more minute. Be, oh, 10 o'clock. It's 10 right on the head. Extended bidding has begun. Now is when the fun begins. Yes, of course. So this here, uh, it being from the Midwest, this was the card. Uh, the minis were much, much more difficult to get than the Topps regular issue. Topps mini of George Brett, Gem Mint 10. We all know these are so condition sensitive given those colorful borders. Mm -hmm. Screams 70s. No set of the 70s screams 70s. <laughs> like the 75 set. You've got the Brett. You've got the Yount kind of anchoring that set. This one here is at 32000 just a, a really cool card, and the minis are starting to gain some momentum, and uh, I, I think it'll continue for a while because you just they're hard to find in high grade. Yeah, and that's a super popular one. Too. And it's Brett. Yeah, I mean, one of the absolute greatest of all time. We should have put that George Brett video you made right in there. Or just slip it right in there. Remember <laughs> when we had the Brett pine tar jersey? Oh, my video? God. Good stuff. Years ago, my friend, years ago. <laughs> You get the Brett, and you also get the Yount. Uh, this is a regular issue. I knew you were going to do that. Oh, I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, my favorite <laughs> athlete of all time. Favorite athlete of all time. You ever, have you ever met him? I told the story at the National three times in one day. <laughs> and then the next day, Naird's like, let's go get a photo. I'm like, ah, I don't want to bother him. <laughs> he made me go take a photo with him and Robin Yount. And of course, he was gracious as always. Here's 75 tops. Another one, just difficult to find in high grade. This one's at 46,000 right now. Um, you know, these rarely get achieved the Gem Mint 10 status. This is one of the few. How many other out there? Let's see. One of, oh, one of only six Gem Mint 10s from wow. that. Wow. I mean, the 75 tops that you, all, both of them, just tough. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Especially get a 10. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go back a little more vintage. Okay. Got to talk about 48 Leaf Jackie Robinson, of course, every time. Uh, we have some great offerings. This, These in high grade, the prices are just bananas. Those in low grade, the prices, I can't yeah. believe what those are going for now. So this one's PSA 6. It's at 34000 right now. No doubt it's got a way to go. But one of the most iconic cards in the hobby, um, famous portrait. And uh, we, sold that we sold the original photo used to make this card uh, earlier this year. Um, but a nice one if you're looking to get an iconic card that is going to appreciate in value. I mean, you can't do much better than Jackie. And this is a really nice six example. Uh, pretty good centering, but the colors are really nice. I was looking at it earlier today. And then one of my favorites, the 49 Bowman Satchel Page. Uh, great card, and this one's a PSA near mint to mint eight, so a nice high grade example. Uh, staring down the batter, right? God, there. I wish he could have played in the you know, I wish baseball would have allowed everyone in. I know, decades could before. Have done, you know, he could have been considered the greatest, greatest of all time. time, yes. Uh, you know, a lot of his contemporaries said that he was, uh, he made his debut when he was. 43. Yeah, he was, he was in his 40s. But it won the World Series, mm -hmm. and I got to pitch in the World Series. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> very important rookie card. Nice example here in an 8. Um, that one's at 16,000. I think that's going to keep going. And then, of course, 52 Bowman Willie Mays. Great card. Uh, another one with the fantastic background. This one, a BBG 8. Pop one with one higher, but uh, you know, this is a card that you've got to have it in your baseball card collection. Mm -hmm. So a nice example, if you can't afford those astronomical prices that this one's going for at the very top of the charts, this is a good example to get in and get one in your collection. Tony. Absolutely. All right. 1969 Reggie uh, Jackson. And we had the 110 that did uh, over a million. This one here, mint nine at 38,000 right now. Centering dead on 50, 50. It looks like across all Across all four uh, borders, uh, just a, a, a beautiful card. Um, a young Reggie Jackson, uh, one ready to take on a take on a career. Sixty thousand estimate right now. Get his own candy bar. It is, yes, at thirty eight thousand. I did eat those growing up. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the unopened case for the 1980 uh, tops. 
Here's a Ricky Henderson Gem Mint 10 right now at 62,500. I can't tell you how many times tomorrow. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times people call and say, I've got one of those. And you have to give them the bad news. Well, the chance of it grading to 10 is slim to none. And I, you never get 10s on this car. Right. It is centering. Which is why you got to bust open that case. Exactly. Exactly. Or you can just win this one. For sure. And then you can buy the case and it's not open that. Why up. not both? Yeah. <laughs> a guy who, who, you know, took leadoff hitting to a whole different level, in my opinion, base stealing as well. I mean, he's, this guy could literally do everything on the, on the diamond. Um, this one will go for much, much more than it's at right now, 62500 Tomorrow that thing will spike up. Oh, you get the Provencale guarantee on that. Yeah, that's going to go places. It's going to get over 100 of yes, course. That's just absolutely. where they go right now. Yep. Uh, only 20 Six and a ten, I believe. I think so. So really low number for a modern car. For a modern car, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of low numbers for high grades, this is the 1968 Topps Johnny Bench rookie card. Very important one in a PSA Gem Mint 10. Fantastic example. Um, another tough issue with those borders. Um, good luck getting a 10. So this card's been submitted to PSA. Almost 9,000 times, there's 15 tens only. Wow. So a, <laughs> you know, common card. A lot of people have it. A lot of people are submitting it. You know, almost 9,000 submissions, 15 tens. That's incredible. Um, so you don't see them come out very often. We rarely see them. This is one that it's going to go into somebody's collection and disappear. So if you need it, you want it, you got a bid tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. get, only in, 15. get in while you can. Yeah, that's a crazy number. Um, that many submissions surprised mm -hmm, me too, mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, okay, here's a good modern one: the 1991 Topps Desert Shield baseball high grade complete set, hard set to complete. Um, they were tough from the beginning. Even yes. getting access to those was was difficult. What is that at? Uh, 4,300 okay. right now. That's going to be closing tomorrow night. You know, of course, it's got the Chipper Jones rookie. Uh, mm the key card there and oh look tommy found it right off the bat look at tommy tommy must be a braves fan in there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah for the 40th anniversary celebration in 91 these were the cards made for the military distributed over there um it's uncertain how exactly they were distributed and you know um having them over there definitely a lot got open the military sure thankful to get them um, and then how are you going to keep them in good condition over there? Uh, a lot to ask. And they, of course, had more important things to, be <laughs> to worry about, about than, than, the than the baseball cards. cards. So, yeah, a tough set to find in, in top condition. So this is all 792. Just assembling it. Is, uh, just getting a set is, is amazing. It's quite enough. an endeavor. Uh, but it's got six cards in 10, uh, 36 cards in a 9, three cards in 8.5, eight in an 8. Um so a great complete set. If this is one you've been trying to complete yourself, you don't got to. Yeah, it's right there. Tonight, uh, very hard set to complete, and I think this is going to see some more action. And you know, in, well. in that time period, it was overproduction of everything. This is the, the is the one exception. With, well, not the one, but it's one of the only exceptions where they weren't mass produced. Right. And from that time, from that era. This is the set to own, yeah. and they're always going to have a good spot in our heart because yeah, it's great the military. Yeah, great tie-in with the military. It's just an interesting story. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. thing for Tops to do. Good timing with the 40th anniversary. Um, but, yeah, good luck if you're trying to complete yeah. yourself. Yeah, Those are hard to find. Yeah, they are extremely tough. Speaking of tough. All on, right, Tony. the one card. Um, we talk modern cards. This is the one that – Bottom left corner. When you ever you see an SP Jeter, the first thing you look at is that bottom left corner to see how bad it is. Mm -hmm. This is one I bet that you is, had a pretty bad example. I never from, had that from card. What I know about your collection. I never had that card, and if I did, it would, I don't think it would have been a nine. I would have had to settle for the eight. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of the eight guy, I guess. But um, the '93 SP, the Jeter, uh, the of course the main card in that set. The bottom left corner always dipped, it seems like, or the ones I saw. Uh, yeah, I this is bottom left. Yeah, this Flawless. one is razor sharp. Mint nine grade, 4,600 right now. Closes tomorrow. And, uh, you know, people will definitely be hitting this with him going into the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah, um, he's now, now he's a team owner. 
You know, he's yeah, kind of settled right. in, settled into that. He's an executive. And he's yeah. an executive. Yes. You think he still makes people put their phones in the basket when they come to his house? Is that just that's during a, the player day? I don't or? know. We'd have to find out. It's a good policy for <laughs> any celebrity to take, I think. So, yeah. Um, and of course, we can't talk modern baseball cards without talking about Mike Trout. So we've got a really nice 09 Bowman Chrome Mike Trout here, the draft pick and prospects refractor. PSA Mint 9 with a 10 auto. Uh, we've talked about things that are a good investment. Mike, Tw Mike Trout is as good as gold. Um, I'll tell you, he makes know, it look easy. Yeah, and this is a beautiful card, especially in the refractor. You've got a nice autograph from him there, graded to 10. The card's a 9. Um, so, yeah, for those people who are, it's a limited edition, of course, it's number 379 of 500. Um, people who are jumping in. Or if you've been in for a while and you're looking for something solid, of course, Trout is one of the best recommendations. You can't go you wrong. Can I mean, he doesn't slump. He just doesn't slump. And now you've got Otani there. You've got so much star power in that in that state. Yeah, they're My a fun goodness. team to watch. They now. are. They are. Uh, switch it up just for a second. I'd never seen this before. Mike Tyson card here. Like oh. you know, I'd seen it out there on the internet or eBay or whatever, uh, but hadn't seen one in person until we got this one. This is the 1987, A Question of Sport, Mike Tyson. Uh, it's a UK production. It's a PSA Mint 9, and I love the image of Iron Mike. So that's here. his rookie card. It's got to be, right? Yes. Uh, I've never seen that. He's loading up with that right hand right there for that poor, poor schmuck that right poor there about soul. to get unloaded on with a right um but yeah, very cool card, PSA 9. And while we're talking boxing uh, and a lot of bids coming in, got to talk about money, yeah, May there's... money Mayweather oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 97 Browns boxing, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Cool image here. He's got the American flag. This is a PSA Gem Mint 10. Uh, there's only 110 total examples on the PSA pop report. And uh, everybody knows how good Mayweather is, but his legend's only going to grow as he gets further away from being an active boxer. Um, well, he's been active of late in <laughs> exhibition style, but uh, yeah, just a legendary boxer, a tactician, a sci you know, a true scientist of the sweet science. He is. He is. Um, Love him or hate him. I yeah. mean, he is amazing. And that's what a great boxer should do. You shouldn't be yep. able to be on the fence on him. You yep. gotta have an opinion. Yeah, I love him. Definitely him. did yep. that. You know, people could either appreciate his skill, or people said he's born to watch, or whatever. Um, but yeah, important boxing card there. PSA Gem Mint Ten. There's only 110 on the PSA registry, so a tough one to get. Uh, and that's going to be closing tomorrow night as well. The Bowman Mantle Eight, 380,000, just got hit. So wow, amazing, amazing. And I think that's going to keep going yeah yeah what else Give 50 it to us, 000 for the johnny bench that you just talked about yeah, about five minutes ago going. yount fifty five thousand. so you're starting to see that climb up uh you know a lot of these bidders they're they're ready to stay up late if they want yeah. it they're going to stay up late and, and it doesn't you, matter i recommend watching that recent bid activity screen first you can watch and hear us there and who wouldn't want to do that <laughs> but also it's fun you know when people this is where you know, savvy bidders get their bid in and then wait for extended bidding to start. Uh, they know what they're doing, and then that's when the real action happens. And just watch on this board how many you see pop one, none higher. Just keep coming back to the top of the board. We have so much fun just watching the bid board. I mean, and I'll sit my say it all the time. Tony I sit records my, it and watches I mean, it. Watch it I study it. I actually <laughs> study the bid board to see what's going on. But no, I mean, it, it's fun to watch to see what people are going after and you know you you hear some hooting and hollering sometimes in our office when uh, something gets a really really Very big true. bid um all right we're gonna take a quick break we'll come back see what's going on talk about what's happening on the bid boards a few more highlights uh from tomorrow night and don't forget we got saturday night as well um what about for the national what do we got or, or have you should I have started planning what we're doing for the national? <laughs> yeah, is that, I got tomorrow. You got to, all right, all right. Yeah, we're going to talk about the national. What's going to be going on there? A lot of great activities. Um, but first, Tony, let's take a look at what uh, our comics department has going on with Pokemon. 
They got a lot. Bart Kaiser, aka the Rad Dad, amassed a huge collection of Pokemon cards and memorabilia. On Christmas Day 1999, Bart gifted a portion of his collection to his four children and wife, making it a holiday they'd never forget. An avid skier, Bart wanted to get in one last run before the season ended. Sadly, he died in April 2018 at a ski resort of a sudden heart arrhythmia. Bart was 68 years old. Today, with the current Pokemon craze, the Kaiser family has now decided to consign with Heritage Auctions the million-dollar collection the Rad Dad left behind. Here's his story told by the Kaiser family. You're seeing just us kids, right? Uh, just super excited about these, you know, these Pokemon cards that we're getting. Um, some of us were a little too young to really know what was going on, but we see kind of like our family, right? And we see especially our dad who loved us, right? And who was doing everything he could to kind of share in that passion with us kids. He wanted to share in the joy of making his children happy. And this made him happy. He loved being a dad and um, Pokemon was a way to share in being a dad of love. Yeah. Mom, I've got a Pikachu! Pokemon to us was our childhood, right? And I feel like that Christmas was the essence of Pokemon <laughs> of our childhood, right? We just realized we dawned upon, you know, this collection and we realized it was, you know, I saw Logan Paul's Instagram and I was like, I swear we got that box. <laughs> and I, I happened to go in our, you know, our closet where dad had stored everything. There were like two or three of them plus like 20 other boxes. And I was like, okay, this is real. <laughs> so I, I sent a message to our family, our family group chat and my brother's just like, Matt, this is real. Then I sent an email to Jesus and he's like, oh my gosh. He's like, you are not kidding about this collection. Like, this is so amazing. As we saw it get packed up, I was like, oh my gosh, like, did we just kind of consign this? <laughs> you know, I know we made the right choice. Um, I know he would want us to, you know, because we're going on with our lives and stuff, but, and, and we did keep a few things, definitely, for sure, but it was harder than I anticipated. got Pikachu! Oh, cool. And the honest truth is, we believe that he's definitely blessing our lives every day, and he's with us, and he, I'm sure he will be thrilled if he sees one of his cards <laughs> make a child yeah, a smile and um, bring joy to somebody else. That's yeah. what will bring him joy. There are a lot of sealed boxes, but there are also a lot of, there's 7,000 plus actually cards, including a, a first edition uh, Charizard. Charizard! Thank you to Heritage, you know, for this amazing opportunity, you know, and to, to spread this message of joy, you know, and passion of my dad's with others, right? This is a tremendous opportunity and this could never be possible without you guys and all the work that you've done. Great, great story there and what a collection. Uh, that's one of the great things about working at Heritage with so many departments. You hear these great stories, these great finds. Uh, they've got that, the comic book department is the Promise Collection, an unbelievable collection of pristine comics that they're going through right now. Um, but it's card night, Tony. It's card night. What's going on on the big board? Let's All right. We've got John Mackey, PSA 9, 64 Philadelphia, 1500. 1964 Tops near set. Oh, I just lost it. 1400. <laughs> oh, man. Carlton Fisk rookie, Gem Mint 10, 33,000. So, those 70s rookies, yes. you're seeing them start to go up. You're seeing those start to appreciate. My goodness, there's one of them. The, the Ty Cobb Portrait Green, SGC 5, 22000 55 Colfax, $30,005. Oh, there's oh, a that extra $5 right there. Spirited bidding war. We love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Yelp, 62 5. Tony Perez, 21000 So, yep, things are starting to uh, move accordingly. All right, well, let's talk a few football cards that are going to be coming up tomorrow night. Uh, open for bidding right now. That's the thing. You can bid right now. You get bid on something you wanted that's an extended bidding. Just move that money right over to something that's closing that's in session the nice two thing tomorrow about it. night. There you go. This one, 2001 Bowman Chrome Autograph Drew Breeze, uh, BGS Mint 9. Breeze, an absolute legend, of course. And... Uh, 
his cards have been doing well, but I think there's room for them to improve. Uh, you know, he actually called it quits. So uh, we'll see what happens with the Saints this year. They're on the Cowboys schedule. So they're... expect one loss. <laughs> so, like, so you mean, uh, yeah, exactly. For sure. The Saints are not going to be marching in, huh? But beautiful card here. You got him with the Chargers as a rookie. I still laugh and seeing him with the. With, I know. It's, you know, it's, it's just hard to imagine. He was associated with the with the Saints for so long. It's like the it. opposite of how quarterbacks, you know, Hall yeah, of quarterbacks. You're right. That you know, at the end, that's, they would go that's to a some great other point. team. Uh, you know, and it'd just be so weird to see them in that other uniform. But with Breeze, it's the opposite. It's mm -hmm. the rookie. Uh, but a huge card here. Uh, the BGS nine with the subgrades eight five nine five ten and nine five and the nine autograph. So, you know, a breeze rookie is important, and I think those are things that are in the next few years. And then he's going to go into the Hall of Fame, of course, in five years. Uh, so that are going to see a jump. So a good investment. And speaking of good investments, how about the twenty twenty Panini Spectra Justin Herbert? All he had was the best rookie season of any quarterback. Hard to argue that. Um, this is the rookie patch autograph hyper PSA mint nine with an auto 10, just 30 of these out there. This is number 26, huge potential and a beautiful card here. You got the three color patch, um, a lot of great graphics and a beautiful autograph from, uh, Herbert reigning he's rookie the, of the year. He's, I mean, he's the, he's in the right city. Young rookie of the year, everything is pointed in his direction. You're, I heard people already talking of him being a potential MVP candidate this year. Yeah, that's in year two. Um, great potential. I mean, he's in Hollywood too. Yeah, I'm I mean, a big fan of this card. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's very attractive. There's a lot going for it. The autograph. You're right. The uh, three color patch and cool. the tough borders. I mean, it's it's a beautiful card and. Of a player, and he's wearing the powder blue as well. There you go, of course. Big that's, fan. That's what does. Always it, right? been a big fan. Of the powder if you throw a mustache on him, then it'd be top top marks for me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got over there, Tony? 2018 Bowman Chrome Prospects Auto, Luis Robert Orange Shimmer Refractor, BGS 9.5 with a 10 autograph. Um, you know, you you talk up and coming players, sluggers. He's this guy one. is is going to be it. And, um, you know, with the variation, the nice autograph, I mean, this, as we like to say, checks all the boxes. And there you go. And the White Sox are an up-and-coming team. There's a lot of things pointing in the right direction for him and this card right now at 3350 3200 I'm sorry. Why did I say that? Um, but, oh, uh, hey, and this, yeah. and this guy plays in Chicago, so – Bring, you can maybe have it on, on display at the National if you win this one. <laughs> Bring it. You'll find a buyer there. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And uh, solid investments, of course, Mahomes. We've got the 2017 Panini Prism Mahomes, rookie autograph, red, white, and blue. Go America. This is the BGS Pristine 10 with a 10 autograph. Amazing card right there. Uh, just 11 graded by P PSA and BGS combined. This pristine example is the single highest graded specimen. So one of those top, top items right there. Um, closing tomorrow night, but you got the dual tens from Beckett right there. And a beautiful, beautiful card. He just keeps getting better and better. Yes. I mean, there, there's no end for him. I mean, he's got a Super Bowl ready. He's, so you I mean, think they're going back to the Super Bowl this year? Are we looking at a Brady Mahomes matchup again? I think there's a that's what Vegas thinks. I right think there's now. a good chance of that happening. Now it's it's tough in football now, especially with the extra game. But I'll tell you what, they've got a lot of weapons, and he is just so fun to watch. Mm -hmm. he, you know, we say it all the time. We, you know, but he is a once in a generation player, and uh, wow, is he exciting! He is so exciting to watch. Hard to argue with that. What do you got over there, Tony? Oh. We talk football cars. We're, you know, this is one of the, this is one of the toughest ones. It's always, and you know, you see it in lower grades, but the fifty-eight tops, Jim Brown in a PSA eight, gorgeous card, famous, famous card of, you know, as many would say, probably the greatest football player of all time, um, best running back, I think, without any hesitation. Um, sorry, Emmett Smith. No, I'm no, sorry, I, I didn't mean to say that. Tough I, to I, argue with I, Jim I, Brown. I, I apologize for that. Jim but, Brown uh, made better movies than. <laughs> Great call. Yeah, true original. Only 11 have been graded higher than this card. And uh, right now, oh, my computer's acting. There we go. 
49,000 right now. There Thank is. you, Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> the next Shouting bid is 49,000. Great, great Jim Brown rookie. And uh, it's one that, uh, you know, you just can't find it in uh, that high grade. Keep it going, Tommy. My mouse is uh, not. is not. Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's Tony. Hold on. Oh, IT Tony. Let's see what he's got. Oh, I could watch this for hours. Can we get the camera on what he's no, working on over here? No, we don't want the camera on this. <laughs> Technical difficulties. All right, so let's talk about the national a little bit. We got it coming up next week. Tony, are you going? I leave. I get there Tuesday morning, and I come back Sunday evening. So I All will right. be there. Can't wait to see so many friends that it's been yeah. We way think it's going to be really big. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm getting there Sunday, so I don't know why you're waiting till Tuesday, Tony. I got uh, an early flight Tuesday though. So okay, we'll early flight. So we're going to be at booth eight twenty four. As always, we're giving out free appraisals, uh, accepting consignments. <clears throat> We've got some promotions going on. Really excited about the break we'll be doing with vintage breaks on Saturday on the main stage. So be sure to come out and see that. Uh, just come out and say hi. We have our Platinum Auction, which is the premier event in the hobby every year. It's going to be launching on Sunday, and we're going to have 600 items. There's <coughs> over 1,500 items in that Platinum Auction, Tony. The biggest one we'd ever had was 750. Now we're at 1,500. Just so I can't wait to see the size of that material. catalog. It's two catalogs, Tony. Oh, it's two catalogs. Two Platinum catalogs. So we're really excited. We want to thank all of the consigners and for you bidders, whatever you collect, cards, memorabilia, vintage, modern, wax, autographs, photos, sets, game worn, game used. What am I missing, bats. Tony? Bats. Hats, t-shirts, and jerseys. Programs. We've got some great collections. Uh, we talked about the Willie McCovey collection. We'll have that on display there. Um, we also have the Al Kaline collection from his family. That's coming up in our fall auction, but we're going to have it on display at the National. Some really cool stuff. What do we got from that? Uh, we've got a uh, beautiful uniform, gold gloves. Uh, oh, God. It's Game. Babe Ruth crown. It's, Babe it's Ruth one crown. of my favorite oh, things. Oh, we've got his Hall of um, – we have, we have his uh, championship rings. We have his 84 World Series rings. So we have some jewelry. Um, got yeah right. We have the crown. Um, Love it. A lot of autographs. Some so unique got, ones. We've got Willie McCovey's <clears throat> Babe Ruth crown. We've got Al Kaline's Babe Ruth crown. We sold Brooks Robinson's. We did Babe Ruth crown. So a really rare thing to see, and we've been lucky enough to see to three see. of them. Best award in baseball, in my Absolutely. opinion. Bring it back, I say. Bring it back. I uh, fixed my computer, by the way. No, nice, uh, Tony. So we're gonna be out there uh, all week. We also have a preview event at our Chicago office. Of course, we're at our home who's office gonna be in Dallas. Wait, wait. Who's going to be talking we'll at this? Get to it. Oh, we'll okay, get to okay. It. We have our home office in Dallas, but we also have offices all over the U.S., Beverly Hills, San Francisco, Palm Springs, Chicago, Manhattan. Did I miss any? It feels like Manhattan. Um, of course. You got them all? Uh, Park Avenue, as they Did say. Do you have Beverly Hills? I got Beverly Hills. Okay. Um, we have offices in Europe. <clears throat> we have offices in Hong Kong. So, Nationals in Chicago, our Chicago office, we're having a preview event on Tuesday. You can come out and see uh, some selected preview items, very Chicago-leaning items selected for that. Uh, we're going to have some drinks, some cocktails, have some hot dogs. Uh, talk hot dogs? About, talk about the hobby, that's right. All right. Uh, maybe somebody will give a lecture is what it's being called now. Uh, really, we're just going to talk about the hobby, so... Um, if you'd like to go to that, let us know. And we, to the first 20 people in the door, we're giving out free tickets to the national at that. So if you want to save, I'll be there, bucks, come get some free drinks, get some, uh, bear hugs from Tony. Um, and then of course at the national, we're very excited to see everyone. Uh, please just come up, talk to us. We missed you guys. Uh, we're glad we can always connect this way, but we're looking forward to seeing you in, in person. person. Absolutely. Tony especially uh, will be eating Gibson sliders for lunch every day. Sliders, Gibson steak, hopefully, if we're lucky. I don't know. <laughs> Gene and Jude. Looking at you, Chris Ivey, yeah. on that one, the steak dinner one night. Um, but very excited for that. So I think we're going to get out of here, Tony. But before we do, a reminder, extended bidding is still going on for session one. Tomorrow night's the modern side. Uh, we're going to be talking about that tomorrow. 
on social media. But uh, extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time for that tomorrow as well. And then Sunday, we've got the final session. More great cards, sets, and wax from our July card auction. And then Sunday, the platinum auction will open up for <sighs> bidding. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Uh, if you'd like a catalog for that, please contact us on our social media or you can reach me at MikeP at HA.com. Tony, how do they Tony G at HA.com. And once again, thank you, thank you, thank you to our consigners for trusting us with your treasure and material and to our bidders who come and make it all happen and trust us uh, with their purchases. We couldn't do it without you guys and we have the best consigners and bidders in the world. Uh, thank you to the staff that helps us put on this show. Uh, there's a hundred people back there. They just do Tony's wardrobe. Uh, but also we have Tommy on the ones and twos there running the cameras. I asked Mike today, I said, Mike, do I need to get my hair done any special way? Do I need a manicure? And he said, I didn't. Roll with it. Roll, Roll with it, it baby. Yeah, there obviously, we go. I've got the hair people tied up doing my. <laughs> um, and as always, <laughs> got to give a special shout out to our operations team the best in the business. They're the people when you consign to Heritage that really handle the material, they process it, make sure it gets imaged, cataloged, uh, taken care of, and then shipped out to you once you win it. Uh, we do over 30,000 items a year and they've been dealing with a lot this year, a lot of auctions. I believe this is our 16th auction of and the sports year. sports many. Yeah, large scale, not counting the weekly auctions that we have every Sunday. Um, and they're getting stuff ready for the national and they're getting ready to ship out the material that's going to sell tonight. So that's why heritage can be so trusted. We have the best operations squad very known lucky. to man. Very so thank you everyone for joining us. We really appreciate it as always. And, uh, everybody have a great night and good luck in the auction.